All right, guys, we did Slapshot last week. The following theme months are still alive as we head into Breaking Away, which came out in 1979. It's one of the best sports movies, I think, ever. 70s month is still alive. Okay. 70s sports month is still alive. Sports movie month is still alive. Mm -hmm. And Paul Dooley month is still alive. (laughs) Yes, Dooley! (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> wow. Okay. So what's next? Oh, Robert God. Altman's A Wedding? 16 Candles. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. Then That's a good we one. just freelance with the fourth Dooley. Okay. Maybe we have the audience vote for it. What wow. if we pretend Dooley like month. Dooley's in heat? It's like, yeah, you guys <laughs> didn't see him. He's in the back of the bank. <laughs> <laughs> Dooley month would be better than Rock Bottom month. Uh, we could keep the sport. He's in Strange Bruce. He's so you in could, Death Wish. You could keep Dooley going with sports. He's in Death Wish? Yeah. That also fits he- 70s movie. We have a lot of crossover right. here. Well, Dooley month is still in play. Breaking Away. I love this movie. Let's start here. CR. Okay. The Foursome movie. Oh, yeah. The Beatles. Yeah. Breaking Away. Boys in the Hood. Stand By Me. Better known as the Byron Mayo. The Hangover. (laughs) (laughs) The Hangover. Heathers. Mean Girls. On TV, we had Entourage, Sex and City Girls, the OC. Mm-hmm. Get the four. They're all different than each other. Yeah. There's an alpha, but then there's like a backup alpha. There's like the weird smart one. There's like the wild card one. Yeah. Or maybe it's a little one like in this movie. Like Moocher, yeah. Why aren't there more foursome movies? I mean, I think you just rattle off a bunch. I think it's like a great it's a great starting point for any movie, especially about youth, because you get to to do the four quadrants. You can you can find out about all these different guys in different ways. Is Diner a foursome or is it more than no, four? No, it's six. I did a lot six. of research for this actually. American Pie, I thought was four, but it's really five. I love the idea of you going to the Smithsonian and like really doing the work to find <laughs> I, out how many foursome movies there are. Much better Google search than premature like ejaculator. All the men, yeah. the cameras going up. And Bill's like, how many guys are in last in the books? Show? Yeah, Morgan Freeman in seven. You know, reading in the library well, after it's closed. <laughs> A lot of times it's three. Yeah, and I think four is better. Okay, okay, because four gives you the wild card character, like in this movie, the Jackie Earl Haley, who's in your New York. Uh, late 2000s, early 2010 CR. Oh, like my, CR my movie. crew? Yeah, you and Greenwald. Well, who, who are the other two? Me, Sean, Zach, and Cara Monica used to roll as yeah. a foursome. Then me and Greenwald and Chuck and, and you know, like, Dolan. Like, we had, we had a... I, See, Chuck would be great in a foursome movie. He's basically the Daniel Stern character. I was going to say, he's Cyril. Like, yeah. yeah, super thoughtful, yep. kind of yeah. crazy. Yeah. Knows how to protect himself with a bowling ball. Yeah. 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 Kicking and Screaming was three plus... plus uh, the uh, the with Skippy character. Skippy's, so Skippy's, Skippy's in the four, crew, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that counts as four. Yeah. I don't know. You What's his have... name? Carlos Jacot? What's that? Carlos Jacot? Yeah. Whatever. Where do you stand on foursome movies? Mm, I think they're great. I think they're really fun. I think they're like perfect though for a sports movie because like they're, they're a team. Like when you're in a yeah. friendship group that is like that, that is that number, you all kind of like play a part the same way that you play a part when you're on a team together, you know? And so in this case, like the fact that it, they're synced together so well. And you don't really know that that's going to happen when you're watching this movie. Yeah. You don't really think like, oh, they're all going to come together to do something because there's no real indication of that until like an hour into the movie. But I think they're a lot of fun. The best part about this is also like the the sort of natural inclination of people to split away and the guy who's trying to keep it together. Because yeah. Like we, we have to get jobs together. We have to like quit those jobs together. <laughs> right. We swim together. We tan together. We play sports together. We go for chicks together. It's like the guy who's like, I need this to be, this is my team. I need this to keep going. And the people who are like, yeah, okay. But like, I'm going to go to Chicago or I'm going to go to college or I'm going to do whatever. Did you have a quartet? No, it was always bigger or smaller. Mm. I think for... It, it works the best in uh, pregame shows. Oh. <laughs> yes. Yeah. A long, a long, it works. long golf, time point of yours. Golf foursomes, if it's the right yeah. four people, are always fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And dinner is always the best. If you have the fifth person for dinner, it just fucks the dinner up. Then it's like two separate conversations. Yeah. It's a great call. Four feels like, <clears throat> and two people can team up against the other two people in some ways. Some can be closer. And that's part of the Beatles get back, right? It was the four, but it was really the two. And then the other two were subjugated. So you get all this hierarchy shit too. Um, this is one of the best ones for foursomes. But the other thing I was thinking, we'll get to sports movies in a second, but the... Uh, this is a great opening bell take by you. The foursome movie. It's- foursome. There's just... I actually don't know why there's not more. I think I like they should be cranking them out brothers, all the time. The, the Wahlberg movie, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I Maybe The Hangover kind of put put the... It's holding on to that the crown for that. For a while, you know, like they did. I have that something. in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. you mentioned right it. there. Uh, another one you've mentioned. One of you mentioned this before about the welterweight belt. Mm. 
I was thinking about the welterweight movie championship, which isn't an every year belt, but these movies that are beloved movies that didn't cost a lot of money oh, yeah. that then have this outsized importance and feel like a heavyweight, but they were really 147 pounds. So just some examples, breaking away diner. She's got to have it. Sex lies and videotape before sunrise. You can count on me. Memento. In the Bedroom, Lost in Translation, Little Miss Sunshine, Fruit Veil, Moonlight. These movies, like, they weren't made with the same kind of budget. Yeah. They were underdogs the whole way. But now we look at them backwards and they're like, oh, those are giant movies. And it's like, that's actually not what they intended. I was just thinking about this last night as I was going through this movie. And it's it's Oscar footprint. And I was like, this is the past lives of 1979. You know, where it's like, right. this is just a smaller movie. It's a character piece. You know, it's made with just a lot of heart and sincerity and thoughtfulness, and it just caught on with people. Yeah. Like, it just clicked. I mean, you were just, before we came on, he was just talking about its obvious influence on Dazed and Confused, which is probably another... That's another one. Yeah. yeah. But it, but the only thing with Dazed and Confused, like, some of the movies don't do well. Like, Dazed and Confused didn't really do well, and then belatedly did sure, well, right? It. Like, this movie did well when it came out, and they started putting in more and more theaters. So there's this weird line of... You know, sometimes these movies that we think, oh, the indie eventual, like Swingers was like this. Swingers was not a big movie. It was quiet in theaters, but then on home video, just like dazed. I, but yeah, this movie was did pretty well in movie theaters the same way that like... Um, yeah, this movie I don't made know, was, $20 million in 1979. Yeah. It had a $2.3 million With no budget. stars. If yeah. you're doing 10 times what your budget was for a small movie, that's crazy. I kind of can't... I just can't believe they don't just make two of these a year. You know, I, just that's like, why I was going with if the I was force a, a movie. Watching it, if I was watching TV or I was at the movies and a preview came on, it's like these four guys are going to be in a bike race. I'd be like, yeah, I'll probably go break it away. <laughs> you know, it's like of all the things yeah. that we get, you know, it's like we just don't get a sports movie that's a David versus Goliath story. Well, I think even more than that, you don't get one made by the guy who made Bullet. Like that's the other <laughs> yeah. thing is like he's the one person who's like so overqualified for this movie in a yeah, way, yeah. and I think that that is part of what elevates the movie. Uh, the Which whole, is, like, by the the, whole, that's John Avildsen and Rocky, yeah, too. Right, like, sometimes thing. you strike oil with, like, these half-decent scripts with a really good premise, yeah. but then the, the right person's like, oh, yeah, I'll do that one. And then all of a sudden it happens. Yeah, it's like Peter Weir doing Dead Poets, where you're like, they didn't have to do... They, they didn't have to make a high school movie. He didn't right. have to make a high school movie, and then he knocks it out of the park. Can we talk about Peter Yates really quick? Yeah. yeah. He made, for the people listening, he made Bullet with McQueen. He's a, I think he's a big, interesting intersection for the three of us, too, in our tastes. Because I know there's at least one that you really like. Well, he he made Eddie Coyle. Mm -hmm. He made Mother Jugs and Speed. He made The Deep, which I think... That's you. That's was that's, one of the most important yeah. mom movies of my childhood. Just for like, wait, she's hot. <laughs> uh, breaking Away. Eyewitness, which people are torn on, but I just think it's an interesting movie with the two stars at the point in their career. And then he did Suspect with Cher. I also really like... All in like 20 years. Hot Rock. It's one of my favorites. Mm. And Crawl was a big VHS, like, mm, fantasy yeah. adventure movie for me when I was a What's kid. that, Anthony, huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Bullet was was probably his most famous movie. Breaking Away was, I think, his most critically successful movie. I finally read the Tarantino book, by the way. Oh, yeah. Which I loved. I thought it was great. Cinema I'm sure a lot of people who listen to this have probably read it or thought about reading it. I, I loved it. I thought it was so good. But he has a whole Bullet chapter and was talking about the mechanics of McQueen in that movie about McQueen's attitude toward movie stardom. Mm -hmm. I thought it was so cool about how he would give lines away. He would like, less is more. I just want to chew up scenery. Just let me be a star. Like, didn't really click, care about plots as much. And Tarantino writes this whole chapter about how brilliant Bullet is because it's not brilliant. Yeah. It's brilliantly unbrilliant. <laughs> and I was trying to think of like, what movie is like that now? Where somebody's like, no, actually take some... You know, it's almost like you're serving a dinner. It's like, no, actually take the sweet potatoes away. Take the broccoli away. Just stick with those three things and then we'll bring in the soup and we're probably good. We were just talking about, before we started, <clears throat> Gosling and the Fall Guy and, every, you know, his whole career and how mm. most of his hits are more female-oriented movies like The Notebook and Barbie. Yeah. But for the real heads, it's these <laughs> like really reserved, kind of like fake McQueen movies like Drive. Right. Where he has no dialogue. Yeah. And he's just looking cool as hell. And right. that's like his, the decision it's like he's placed made. Beyond the Pines, he's just wearing a Metallica t-shirt and he has blonde hair. Riding and a motorcycle. Doesn't talk. Yeah. I don't know how many actors have figured that out of the modern era, but I think Pitt realizes like every couple of years, I just have to be 
movie star Brad Pitt. He's becoming something. less and less verbal too. Like I feel yeah. like you know, in yeah. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, he spends most of his time just kind of mugging, chewing and, on an yeah. apple. Yeah, yeah. I, I was listening to an interview with Chris Pine recently because he he directed his first movie and he was like doing the press tour and he's telling this story about working on the Jack Ryan movie Shadow Recruit and he was like, yeah. I wish that movie would have done better. I love that character, but I'm really glad I did the movie because I got to work with Kevin Costner. And the thing that Kevin Costner told me is basically what you were just saying about McQueen, where he was just like, it doesn't really matter what's going on in the movie. He's like, you need to hold the weight of the movie right. on your face. And the camera will figure it out if you care enough to make this movie work, which is like, on the one hand, crazy movie star bullshit, but <laughs> yeah. also like kind of true. Yeah. You know, when you're watching a movie and you're like, man, well, we I really care what happens Newman. to this person. Newman and Slapshot last week, just some of the scenes he has with no, just his facial expressions. But Anyway, Yates did Bullet, which was, you know, I think one of the most important action movies of the 60s yeah. and 70s, right? Yeah. Kind of a, Probably, like a turning point, I feel yeah, like. Yeah, definitely one of them. Um, but then Eddie Coyle <laughs> was the kind of movie that, you know, yeah. that that's like laying the seeds for all the movies that CR and I probably like more than everyone else on the planet. Yeah, I mean, it's one of my favorite crime novels, the George V. Higgins book, but that the the rendition of that is just incredible and like... Yeah, just, yeah. just people kind of watching people from across the yeah. street as they go and get stuff. And that's like a scene. His sense of place is pretty amazing. When you think about Coils, Boston, right? Like yeah. uh, the Bay Area for Bullet. The um, Deep. And the Deep. Fucking and then, scary. The Chicken Blood. Just where, where were you in the Caribbean in that one? I can't mm -hmm. remember. And then just like how fully realized like Bloomington is here. Yeah. You know? And you just feel totally. like. You know, By an English director. Yeah, you can tell, like, what the weather is. You know, you can tell, like, oh, it's uh, it's really humid here today, probably. You know, like, you have that feeling as you're going through the movie. It, it does so much, because this movie's, like, an hour and 40 minutes, and it's it's so deep and so complex in a lot of ways, but it just never slows down. It's just, like, it, it keeps going in this, in this one direction. It's an emotional movie. Yeah. Yeah. It plays a lot of the sports movie hits, but doesn't do it intentionally. Can There's I a you, lot of that, like... Um, maybe those guys are better than us. Like it's got <laughs> yeah. like some of those beats, but uh, they're all earned and they're it's all really smart. This happens every once in a while when we're we're doing a movie that was probably really big in our for us when we were kids or younger, and then we've revisited it for this pod. But did you guys were you guys struck by like being drawn to the parents more this time, <laughs> <laughs> or like how much parents there is in this movie? Because I think when I was a kid, I don't know if I zoned out during the Barbara Berry Paul Dooley scenes, but. I only thought of this as a, a bicycling and young guy movie. And then when you watch it now, it's like 50-50. Well, yeah. it's the best scene in the best like dramatic scene in the yeah. movie is when he finally is hugging his dad and oh, he yeah. won't let him go. And then it just cuts to the mom. And she's got like the perfect look on her face crying. The other thing that I noticed that is related to that that is so striking is the way that they talk about Cyril and Cyril's dad. And then the last scene when Cyril is like looking around for somebody to hug. And there's no one there for him, yeah. which is kind of similar. Like I don't, I, I had that written down I would, too. I would have never clocked that, but it's the same thing that you're talking about. It's like the parents and the way, like the role that they play, especially for like you literally have a daughter. Yeah, is the age of these guys right now. It's a weird time in your life. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The Daniel Stern. It's such like a cool choice that they decided to do that versus like just the sports movie ending. Yeah, yeah. Just like he's everybody just hugging Stern, together. This, he's like, this is the greatest moment of my life, but now I'm sad. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. have a person. I had this written down just the best sports movie scripts ever. And I think this is one of them. Written by Steve Tessich, who yeah. won the uh, Oscar. McGuire, we did. I think Rocky as a script is really good. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. And it, even though it's crazy because Stallone wrote it, I still feel like it's in the combo. It's a great, it's a great script. Bull, Bull Durham. And I think the way back I would put up there. Really? Yeah. I think that script, I think that movie is unbelievable. We'll do it at some point. But yeah. I think that's so well written and well crafted. That's cool to have a modern one in there. Um, yeah. But I'm I'm sure there's more, but those were the first five that jumped to my head. But, you know, with sports movies, usually the script matters less. You know? Yeah. It it's more all about the matters big game. like yeah. who's going to be the hero? Yeah. How, what are the mechanics of sports throughout the movie? What are we leading to? What's that last 20 minutes going to look like? Yeah. I would add, Creed, Mon I would add Moneyball well to that too. Because that's like a very unlikely yeah, kind that's of a sports, good call. Yeah, because it was such a hard one to and pull And if people off, are yeah. out there, like the there's various versions of the Moneyball script that are floating around online, so you can see like Sorkin's version. Yeah, and then what happened when it kind of got re redone a little bit. Yeah, yeah, Creed's a good one too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but this one is just like, this is an awesome indie script that they just made into a great sports movie. I, uh, I did my 70s sports movie Pantheon. Okay. Is it a, didn't tell you guys. Is it a pyramid? It's a pyramid. A pyramid? Yeah. I have not been present for one of the pyramid unveilings, so I feel honored. You, you were here for premature ejaculation. I wasn't I missed a pyramid. That. It was Mount I Rushmore. That. I was really sad. It was Mount that. came too fast more. <laughs> Getting facts straight. <laughs> Uh, By the way, apologies to the guy well, from the beginning. <laughs> apologies to the guy from the beginning of Halloween. One of my buddies yeah. was uh, outraged yeah. we didn't put yeah. him in. Yeah. They go upstairs. He's gone like two seconds later. It's a yeah. tough one. Um, sadly, he didn't get murdered by Michael Myers. <laughs> Maybe down the road. He just has to live with his shame. 70s sports movie pyramid. Mount came too fast more? Mount came too fast more. <laughs> yeah. 70s sports movie pyramid. I got Rocky at the top. <laughs> In the triangle alone. Top level. Okay. When Rocky. you're making your pyramid, is it personal preference or is it importance? I think it's everything. I just think Rocky's the most important sports movie this decade for a slew of reasons. It also did really well when it came out. It's a really good movie. It's a little slow now. Is it the is it the most important sports movie of all time? I think it probably is. Yeah. It's definitely if you're just talking about impact and how much something's been ripped off and imitated and that's another really good chapter in the QT book is the Rocky, Rocky two yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, next level, longest yard and breaking away. Have them two and three. Okay. Longest yard <clears throat> because it's like the first great modern sports movie. Breaking away because it's such a great just start to finish film with mm -hmm. real characters and this world you just go into and it's fucking awesome. And we'll talk about it. Next level, I have Slapshot, Bad News Bears, and Rollerball which I think are all great movies for different reasons and really distinct. And also, like, Bad News Bears got ripped off a bunch, too. Slapshot, we talked about last week, and Rollerball's just, like, an amazing look at where football's going. Yeah. Um, yeah. And maybe where society's going. Then that next level, Jericho Mile, Rocky Two, North Dallas 40, Downhill Racer. Oh, yeah. That's my top 10. Downhill Racer 69. I thought it was 70. 69. Oh, I'm going to have to bump it. Um, Damn it. Well, now there's a there's a slot open. Well, now there's a slot. Okay. 69, really? Pretty sure. Yeah. Fuck. One of my faves. All right. Well, Bad News Bears 2 Breaking Training is going to get the 10th spot. Hmm. Okay. What about Fat City? I don't know that one. The boxing, boxing movie? movie. Stacey Keach. Really good. If you haven't seen it, recommend it. I had Fast Break, One on One, Fish That Saves Pittsburgh, and Bingo Long. As honorable mentions. Yeah, I like Bingo Long. Uh, I'll What's have to the one figure that you're always that. like, I'm personally insulting you by having not seen? Yeah, it fucking makes me mad. What is it? Inside Moves, but okay. it's 1980. Okay. Yeah, you're a jerk. All right. Somebody from this movie is in Inside <laughs> Moves. Jackie or Earl Haley. Oh, yeah. Girlfriend. Anyway, but the top 10, so Bad News 2 gets moved into the top 10. That's exciting. Um, third best movie. Of the 70s, in my opinion, for sports. Breaking away. Yeah. Did you say slap shot? You did. He did. I had that for you. He has okay. a beneath this and what's the other? What's tier Rocky, two? Longest Yard, Breaking, oh, longest breaking yard. Away, Slap Shot, Bad News Bears, Rollerball. What's your favorite? Slap Shot. Definitely. Rollerball is pretty interesting. It's kind of a kind of a, like a me movie. It's all ideas and, you know, like the corporation destroying the player and everything. Kind of a great, like they should just remake that with LeBron. That would just be amazing. <laughs> like, wouldn't wow. that be incredible like right now <laughs> with clutch yeah. I also yeah. I have Jericho much higher I think <clears throat> it gets tough man the top I think the top seven in some order is pretty established and then it drops off to the Rocky 2 North Dallas 40 is close but that movie has the Mac Davis being like the quarterback I can't really that's a really tough one I love him at the I just he's really it. good in the movie but yeah. it's he's so unrealistic yeah, as a quarterback yeah, yeah. He's a, but it's weird it's his first movie and he's yeah. really good he's going toe to toe with Nolte basically yeah, he's really you know, good. Like he, he plays really well but, but I guess he's, was he like a Doug Flutie type or was I don't know deal? I don't yeah. know Bingo Long is is really fun to watch but really slow and mm -hmm. really 70s like it's a movie it a that time. feels like it came out there's some like Brian Song and Bang the drum slowly and big along that really feel like they came out 50 yeah. years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this one. Can you not get into bang the drum slowly because it's the Yankees? No. I, it's just that movie feels like it might came out in like 1950. Mm. It's the first an era movie. Uh, for this movie, one of the interesting wrinkles, Dennis Quaid, who 
you could make a case as the star of the movie, even though he's not. I think you can make the case for a couple of different people in the, you know, in the film. I mean, he's became the most famous person in the movie, but he's not the star of the movie. He's the most, to me, the most important of the four. No. For what his character. No, 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 hear me out. For what his character is, like the story they're trying to tell. Like this guy's like, I've already peaked. Yeah. I'm not really smart enough to do anything about it, Mm -hmm. but I'm self-aware enough to know that I've already peaked. Um, You can kind of see where his life's going in a lot of ways. The other guys, it's like, Hey, Jackie Earl Haley's going to marry that girl. They'll have some kids. They're going to stay there. Yeah. The uh, Daniel Stern character, I don't know. He might get out. He could, could see yeah. him going cross country. The Dennis Christopher character, I don't know where he's going, but it, it'll be, he'll take a swing. He's got a loving family. It, yeah. It'll be something. Yeah. yeah. Quaid is like, this is who I am. I'm here. I'm but the, probably fucked. The, one of the key reasons I like this movie is that this movie doesn't follow the Dennis Quaid character. Like 99 out of 100 times, he's the he is the, the lead. Yeah. yeah. Do you like, go back to his house? To ride the bike. Yeah. yeah. He gets on the bike yeah. when Dave gets hurt. And he he's the and best. He wins. Yeah. yeah. He's and it, the best, best monologue in the movie, though. Oh, with about like, they're going to stay the same age and we're going to keep getting older. Yeah. I'll do it. I'll do it later okay. when we get to it. I mean, he's great in the movie, don't get me wrong. And he's a really important character, but this is totally Dennis Christopher's movie, in my opinion. There's this weird thing that happens when you go back and watch films that have ensembles like this, and either some or all of the people have become stars since then. But they're unknowns then, because, like, Yates very conscientiously, like, cast this movie where he was like, we needed to have unknown or, like, young actors who were not particularly self-aware about, like, their public identity or mm. what people saw in them because you needed to be able to truthfully be these characters throughout all these different kinds of moments. And we've it, talked about that a lot on yeah, this pod. Like That's going, like Renee Zellweger and Jerry Maguire. Yeah, or, or it's or Sandra Bullock, it's a different movie. Yeah, yeah, right, right. And it's just, a, it's an interesting thing that Quaid winds up having this massive career after this movie, but is, I think, a supporting character to the, to the Dave character ultimately. I wonder if, because he's just a little bit older than some of the other guys too and he'd been in Hollywood for a few years that yeah. they're almost like preying upon his like is he really gonna make it quality that like the character really needs to where he's like is my life over already I got to be like an uncredited stand in on two movies in the early 70s yeah. and maybe I won't do anything anymore I don't know he's involved with PJ Souls at this point <laughs> get to her in a second W yeah Oscars best original screenplay winner Nominated for Best Picture, Director, Score, and Supporting Actress. Stunning. The yeah. mom. Five Oscar nominations. Yeah. Kramer versus Kramer kind of blew this movie out of the water. Meryl Streep, the movie itself, the director. But uh, Steve Tesich wrote Breaking Away, Four Friends, Eyewitness, World According to Garp, and American Flyers in like a five-year run. Dude loved, loves bikes. Yeah. Loves cycling. cycling. But was a big playwright. Yeah. And then uh, died pretty young. Kind yeah. of peaked in the seven-year window, and that was it. Yeah. But American fun. Flyers is also pretty cool, too. Yeah. Well, you know I love that movie. And this was, like, two scripts that he had that I think they put together, basically. Yeah. 2.3 million budget made 20 million. Roger Ebert, four stars. Yeah. Welcome back, Raj. Love this movie. Welcome back, Raj. <laughs> Still reeling from Fast Times. One star. What did he call it? A scuzz pit? I think he was like, this is such a vulgar use of Jennifer Jason Lee. Yeah. Didn't he use the word scuzz pit? Yeah. He said Fast Times was a scuzz pit? He said scuzz pit. It's a bad take. <laughs> it's a really bad take. Quote, Breaking Away is a wonderfully sunny, funny, goofy, intelligent movie that makes you feel about as good as any movie in a long time. It is in fact a treasure, which is why it's in half as many theaters as trash like Bloodline. <laughs> Watch one on a fucking rant. <laughs> Bloodline was with Audrey Hepburn and Ben Gazzara, who went on to play the guy in Roadhouse. Yeah. It was based on a Sidney Sheldon movie, and Raj hated it. I read that review, too. He's very upset about it. <laughs> Raj was doing the Where Are Movies Going in well, 1979. It's kind of fun doing, like, when you do the drive-by on another movie in a different film's yeah. review. That's very rare for him. I think also, uh, he didn't... He's kind of a moralist, you know? And, like, when it gets into the 80s and all the slasher movies, he gets really cranky. Him and Siskel are, like, complaining about Friday the 13th and stuff. And this yeah. is, like, the early stages of him being, like, what's happening to our movie culture? Like, the new Hollywood is dying. Yeah. His other shit is coming along that he doesn't like very much. He would have loved Red Notice. <laughs> <laughs> he also said, Breaking Away is a movie to embrace. Movies like this are hardly ever made at all. When they're made this well, they're precious cinematic miracles. <laughs> 1979. Yeah. How many years ago is that? Yeah. 
That's uh, yeah, 30, 45 years ago. 21 times. It's 40, 45. I'm trying to do math here. 45. Yeah. 45? 45. 45. <laughs> 45 years ago. So Raj was worried about movies 45 years ago. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and now nobody will go to movies anywhere. He's just like me for real. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> At least people went to movies back then. Yeah. Like they'd be like, oh, they cool. I, heard, also... I heard good things about breaking away. I'll go to the theater and the, see it. The make it for 2 million and it makes 10x is like a, that's like a good business model. Yeah. That's the business model. Yeah. That's when they fuck. So it nowadays up breaking bad. away does what? It, it never is released in a theater. Yeah. It's a, it's a Disney plus movie. Sundance bought by Apple. And then it's just on the screen next to like that Colin Farrell show of Sugar. It's like Sugar or Breaking Away. What do you want to do tonight? <laughs> I was I saw Chris over the weekend, and I was uh, he he and someone else were talking about Sugar, and uh, I know there's a big twist in Sugar, and I just had him tell it to me, and I I couldn't believe it. Like, did you know did you know this? We don't worry no. to spoil it, but I can't, I could not believe it. Colin Farrell ends up being Italian. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's a, Colin Farrell hates mojitos. <laughs> it's like no, these things suck. 1979 well, box office is kind of interesting because it's like both things you're talking about. It's like on the one hand, it's Kramer versus Kramer and Apocalypse Now. And on yeah. the other hand, it's Amityville Horror, Rocky II, Star Trek the movie, Alien. Wasn't it, 10 this year? Moonraker 10, the Muppet movie. Like, it's like the rise of the franchise, the rise of the recognizable thing that you enjoy. And also, Kramer versus Kramer is the biggest movie yeah. of the year. <laughs> like, that's so How crazy. much did it make? 106 million. Adjusted, that's a lot. Yeah, that's yeah. a shitload. That's what, 300 million, 400 million? Top 10 domestic. First of all, no movie made $100 million in the calendar year in 79. Superman, The Amityville Horror. Do I have anybody for me, with me on Amityville Why Horror? Why do you keep asking that? It's like, what, what do you, who do you think you're talking to? I think it's fine. I, I don't, so you're not invited. I, I, I think it's okay. Rocky II, Star Trek, Alien, Apocalypse, 10, The Jerk, Moonraker, Meatballs, Escape from Alcatraz, Manhattan. That was our top 12. Also, The Warriors came out this year and Breaking Away and Kramer versus Kramer, which made most of its money uh, in 1980. Fish That Saved Pittsburgh, Great Santini. You love great. a little Santini, right? It's some great movies. I like Santini. Yeah. I don't like when they are mean to Stan Shaw in that movie. It's it's tough for me. I heard you uh, uh, just blaspheming Robert Duvall on your podcast. I, I wanted to say, I, I just blast straight up at do all. not appreciate it. Wasn't a blaspheme I think at all. you should just watch his work in Network and you can see what that was he blaspheme? was an alpha. He was the Luca so Jason of, of his time. Jason Tatum's averaging 30 points a game. I, Duvall is a legend. <laughs> And uh, I, so is Jason he's Tatum. not like you maybe, think Jason Tatum is a legend. No, I think Jason Tatum's on pace to hit a lot of checkpoints, just like our guy Bob DeVall. <laughs> Could he win an Oscar? Could I he win a finals MVP. I was listening to the pod and I had like a very, very, very small aneurysm <laughs> when, when that start what part started where I was like, no, no. All right. Have you done a Robert Duvall Hall of Fame? No, in the but big maybe picture? I should. Isn't no. that, he's still alive. You haven't. It's it would like be 95. impossible to do it. It's you haven't. there's so okay, many. Okay, you keep making excuses. Okay. All right. Most rewatchable scene. Opening credits. Can I just say, what a fucking opening credits. When it goes, to, it when it has, cuts the shot, the wide shot of the quarry, and it's just like directed by Peter Yates, you're like, I know these dudes I'm in good already. hands. This yeah. is awesome. I wrote the same thing. They nailed the four guys in like two and a half minutes. Yeah. Sense of place. Yeah. You're like, I know all these dudes. All right, the little guy, they're going to make fun of him. That's like clearly the best athlete is going to get in a fight later. Here's the uh, quirky one with the blonde hair. And I was then Daniel Stern, I know. Watching it this time, I had forgotten that I think, is it Stern or Quaid? But Stern, I think, has the line where he's like, what is 19? Like, he's like, you get a sweet 16. At 18, you can drive and, and you can buy You, you can drink and vote and see dirty movies. Yeah, but nobody cares when you're 19. And he's right. Nobody cares when you're but 19. But then somebody else says, you get to move out of your house. <laughs> Like you get to move yeah. out. Like basically that's what you have to look for. If you to, can. If yeah. you can. Yeah. yeah. And we also get Crazy Dave reading, uh, writing and singing in Italian. We're like, oh, this guy's a nut job. Next one. Mike pretending he drowned and then getting pissed that the uh, Indiana University kids show up. This is the big Dennis Quaid part. They're going to keep calling us cutters. To them, it's just a dirty word. To me, it's just something else I never got a chance to be. It's really going for it. It's like a fucking Bruce Good Springsteen Oscar song yeah, right there. Yeah. yeah. He was saying uh, he was a really great quarterback. He won't smoke cigarettes because he wants to stay in shape. 
every year it's a new quarterback. Every year it's not going to be me. I'm just going to be Mike, 20 year old Mike, 30 year old Mike, old, mean, old man Mike. Really going places. Yeah. DQ. Tragic, tragic figure. You like Dennis Quaid as an actor? I have a, another part of the pod where I want to discuss this. Okay. The scene when Dave chases the truck. The Shinzon Oaks truck, yeah. Is fucking awesome. Love his part. Because he, one of the cool things about this movie, and I don't remember, one of the people that wrote about it said this, so I'm stealing the point. But you always feel like something terrible is going to happen, but nothing ever does. Like, probably the closest is when he hits his head when he's swimming. Yeah, which I, think is that's in the Eber, I think that's in the Ebert review. Maybe it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. There's like this sense of doom, but there there's never actually doom. So when he's following the truck, you just assume the guy's going to jam on the brakes and he's going to slam into it. But he doesn't. It ends up being like a yeah. pleasant interaction. The guy gets a speeding ticket. Yeah, it's such a low wattage movie in terms of conflict. Like, yeah. nothing's like There's like a really bowling alley stake? fight that's yeah. there. The uh, Mike racing, this is the one time someone gets hurt when he races the Hart Bachner character in the, uh, in the pool. What a great villain that guy is. We'll yeah. talk about him later. CR, where'd you stand on the Cinzano 100? The Italians acted, I thought, a, a kind of unsportsmanlike. Uh, yeah, definitely. They, they really come off as pricks, but that's so great that you romanticize something your whole life, and when you finally get a chance to be around it, they're just like these fucking asshole Italians who are just like, come on, man, fall back. We're here to put on a show. I love that scene immediately afterwards when he goes back home and basically says to his dad, like, I'm dropping the Italian act. Everybody yeah. cheats. You know, yeah. everybody cheats. Have that one as well. The crying mom, I think, is part of that scene too. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, do you want to like defend the Italians in any way, being half Italian? I know. How I do you don't. Feel about that? We're not proud of the behavior. Okay. They disgraced all of all of us Italians and half Italians. <laughs> <laughs> the little five hundred race, which is the last fifteen minutes of this movie, the Indiana song is incredible. Hmm. Dave gets hurt because we have to have some sort of conflict. The little guy gets on the bike. The villains taunt the little guy. Mm -hmm. Look at the little guy. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> Mike gets pissed. It's like, come on, Mike. Fucking suck it up, dude. He but steps I, up. I still feel like this is Mike's movie as much as Dave's movie. We need Mike to get on the fucking bike. Yeah. And to get over his mm -hmm. whole thing that he's just going to grow old and not matter in this town. Like, here's your moment, Mike. Gets on the bike. Busts his ass around a couple of times. Dave gets taped back on. And then... I think one of the best moments in any sports movie, the wide shot for the last two laps. Oh my God. Holy shit. Yeah. So cool. I don't know how they did it. I, I don't know how they did it. It's like that Creed, the Creed thing we talked about when we did the Creed part. And it starts before it goes to the wide shot. There's that cut of the like Dave's perspective of the crowd going by and going nuts as he's gaining on him. And it's like, it's such an awesome, awesome like. Thousands of extras, overhead shot at the, you know, flash finish. Never cuts away from it. No. Yeah. Keeps it. Incredible. Incredible. Such cool filmmaking. Two laps. It's like about over a minute. It's like 70, 75 seconds. And then the way that they're battling, I, I don't know how he does it, but he makes his move, but he can't get by him. And then you're like, oh shit, he's not going to be able to get him. And then all of a sudden he gets the inside track and just beats him. It's really great. It's so cool. I mean, it's easily my pick because it's just so yeah, exciting. Last yeah, the yeah. last race is just so perfect. Would you give it the Kid Cudi Pursuit of Happiness Award for Best Needle Drop too when he crosses the finish line? The I think I got to give it to his <clears throat> serenading Catherine, but yeah. Okay. I also do like the uh, IU song over the credits. It's a, it's a fun one too. Great celebration. Dana Stern, nobody to hug. Celebration stand. That's got to be the most rewatchable yeah. scene, right? Amazing, yes. yeah. I really Paul, like the Paul, Paul Dooley there. bringing him in tight. What stage the best? What do you guys hear? Uh, I think I think college towns. I, one of one of the things mm. I just wanted to, to talk about was like I think the ones that I spent the most time in was like Poughkeepsie because I had some friends who went to Vassar. Yeah. Um, but like that, the the townie versus the college kids tension, but also like this town is just big enough to like keep you occupied and do some stuff but it's still really small and yeah. you will walk by the same people two or three times in a day. You, everybody goes to the same three bars. Everybody goes cause it's same two pizza parlors. That microcosm is a perfect like movie setting. I wish, I wish we had more college movies that were set in places like that. Did you guys have people to visit who were in college when you were kids? Yeah. Yes. I used to go, I guess when we were kids or when we were like in college kids. No, like nine. 
Like how old? Are you because like when I, I was only a teenager? knew the only colleges I knew were Holy Cross because we used to go there for basketball games. So mm-hmm. we'd be like, oh, they have a hill and kids walk around. And then BC <sighs> seemed huge. And then Stonehill because my aunt Louise and my uncle Don went there, and that was like tiny. Yeah. No. So then I would to- see Breaking Away. I'm like. Whoa, it's like a whole city and yeah. people go to college. Yeah. Like, I just had no concept of what it was. Same. I don't think I saw a college campus other than St. John's until I visited colleges that I would go to. Yeah. yeah. I would just so see these Temple movies have like, yeah. I think w- to what you're saying though, like, I would watch these college movies and I'm like so interested in college, like what the, per, just what it was. That's like, so oh, funny. He's going to serenade yeah. these girls at a dorm. Yeah. Is this where the girls, they all live in a dorm? Is this what happens? <laughs> you just don't know. Yeah. How are you going to know any better? Probably just from movies is the only, yeah. only thing I knew about it. Um, also, I just feel like the state of Indiana um, and sports in 1979 yeah. has aged really well. Yeah. This is, this is Bert, right? This is like the beginning of, the Larry, isn't it, isn't 78, 79 is like the Indiana State, yeah. Michigan State game. I mean, imagine so, the fever in Indiana when this movie came out. I had this, I had this for a uh, hottest take I'll just do it now. Oh, wow. Apex Mountain for Indiana right here. Bobby Knight, most famous basketball coach in the world. Mm-hmm. He recruits Isaiah Thomas in 1979. Okay. <clears throat> Larry Bird's at Indiana State going undefeated. Uh-huh. About to f- go with magic. Wayne Gretzky's on the WHA team. Oh, is he? In 78, 79. And oh. Mark Messier. No. And the team folds as they're filming this movie. Was it an Edmonton Farm League team? No. It was just they fold and no they kidding. sold the kids. Yeah. Breaking away they're making. Michael Jackson releases off the wall in 1979. That's famous right. Indiana Gary, person. yeah. The Yankees in 1979 draft on Mattingly. Indiana's own. Yeah. Indiana's own. Holy shit. There's an awesome... <laughs> Indiana's really cranking them out there. Yeah. There's an awesome Indy 500 that year. Rick Mears beats Al Unser Jr. <laughs> okay. Research that. Cool. Jane Pauley, the first lady of Indiana, is hosting the Today Show with Tom Brokaw. They're killing everybody. Jesus. He ends up getting promoted. Okay. And then Letterman is, is guest hosting for Carson about to get his NBC show. Hmm. Indiana's fucking killing it in wow. 1979. Wow. Now they got something. Caitlin Clark. Yeah, maybe it's a comeback. Maybe yeah, somebody's Siakam. filming. What was Mike away. Pence up to back then? Yeah, right. <laughs> Mike Pence. <laughs> Mike Pence was having ideas. <laughs> uh, that's a good one, though, for what's age the best. Cycling movies. I just like cycling movies because yeah. they're better than running movies. Cycling movies, it Ooh. feels like there's more, there's crash potential. Sure. Uh-huh. And somebody might get sideswiped. Somebody might get pushed off. Running, people are just running. What's going to happen? Might it's step cinematic. on someone's foot. Cycling. Just works better. Are you in or out on Chariots of Fire? It's it's kind of like the eating broccoli of great Oscars movies in the early yeah, days. There's yeah. a couple of those. I agree. Out of Africa also. Yeah. yeah. Gandhi's like that too. The yeah. great movie, I wouldn't be like, hey, let's watch Gandhi tonight. We should redo the Oscars, but just in the 80s. I just feel like they fucked it up like every time. I just got too pretentious. Yeah. Yeah. It was like the the perception of what an Oscar movie was versus just what should have won. You yeah. should do that on the YouTube channel. This let's, let's do it. Die Hard 2 should have won. <laughs> CR, how about this for what stage is the best? The pink polo wearing, blue Mercedes convertible driving, college swimmer, handsome villain guy. Named Rod. <laughs> named Rod. Yeah. Just a great villain. Who later goes on to get killed at Nakatomi Plaza. <laughs> yeah, he'll always right. be Ellis to me. I mean, <laughs> that's another what stage the best yeah. though. He's this the guy same becomes Ellis. Guy. Yeah. It is but with one an, part. But with a sick beard yeah. and die hard. Yeah. Robin Douglas. Elite. Just like in the pantheon for 70s babes. And I, you know, sometimes. It's like we talk about when there's just a glut in basketball. There's just a lot of stars. Sometimes yeah. not everyone can make the OMBA. It would yeah. be like the league is so talented right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's like yeah. Jalen Brown. Sorry, there's, did you see how many yeah. players there are? Yeah. You couldn't make yeah. it this year. Yeah. <laughs> She's going against Linda Carter, Charlie's Angels, <laughs> Catherine Bach. She just gets lost in the shuffle. <laughs> Meanwhile, I was putting up 25, 7, and 9 yeah. every game. Yeah, she was the Anthony Randolph of her day. Uh, all the tools. I, uh, I just rewatched The Lonely Guy. She, that's her other, <laughs> yeah, that's her other 10 out of 10. <laughs> she looks beautiful in The Lonely Guy. I love The Lonely Guy. Yeah, it's a good movie. Hart Bachner's Blue 450 SL. You liked it? Yeah, I think it was a 78. Really nice. I love that moment when they 
going in reverse and he's following the car. That's such a Great cool car. shot. The, yeah. the 70s movies, the cars, and when they have the downtowns, there's just not a lot yet. So it's like, it's like a sicko station. There's like a diner. There's like a hardware store. Mm-hmm. But they'll do the wide shot and it's just like, ah, oh, it's so simple back then. Yeah. Now it's like a Chipotle. <laughs> you know, and, and just all of these chains all over the place. I was just, I love Chipotle. I was though. thinking about this I think you and I are kind of definitively East Coast, right? Like we're a little bit yeah. like a little, little, a little, little mean, a little competitive. Yeah. But CR, even though he's from Philly, I feel like has big like Indiana Midwest energy, like oh, super like, gregarious, like Western nice. Kind yeah, of, like yeah. you know, there's a, there's a little darkness underneath, but like you're very open, warm. You want the best for everybody. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Would you fit in with these guys? Yeah, oh, you would have made yeah. more sense in Indiana. Yeah, I would have been like a great like IU swim coach <laughs> who also like directed plays you or know? The, or drama, <laughs> yeah. drama teacher. You know, another what's aged the best? Amy writes IMDb. She's Jackie Earl Haley's girlfriend. Nancy. In this. She was a bridesmaid in The Deer Hunter. Mm. She was the babysitter in Amityville Horror who gets locked into the closet in the attic from Jody, the ghost. <laughs> Tough beat. She's the inside moves, the druggy girlfriend. All four in a row, like just banging them out. Good it's, character it's actress. great stuff. You haven't seen inside moves? I haven't seen inside moves. Just trying to hurt me. Can That's I all right. It? You know what? I'm, we're never doing Hunt for Red October until you see inside <laughs> moves. How about that, <laughs> motherfucker? How about that? <laughs> Don't we'll tease never, me. Nobody will ever get Don't your for Red October takes. <laughs> <laughs> you were dangling the carrot of a couple of movies, and then and you know I'm I'm here for you. Whatever you need, I'll watch Inside Moves right now while you guys are talking. <laughs> what stage the best? Taggart as Mike's brother. Oh God, Did young that Taggart. One scene too, where he's just like, if you keep doing this, if you keep hot rodding around campus, I'm gonna take the car away. And Mike's like, all right, it's like all right. You know, it's just like you get everything about the brothers there. I feel like John Ashton's been 60 years old for 70 consecutive I can't years, though. He's, he's still like alive. 28 it's in weird. this movie. It's I crazy. saw him in the Axel F trailer, and I, I honestly thought he died 10 years ago. He's back. He looked pretty good. Um, Barbara Berry, what's say age, age the best? Just awesome. One of one of the all-time great moms to me in scre- on screen. Sexual being, too, Chris. Her, uh, <laughs> and, and that's right. That's right. She has knees as well. You know what? Uh, <laughs> Parents have sex too. <laughs> yep, yep. We're um, learning that more and more. Mm. <laughs> but her her passport scene, you know, yeah. like why I carry the passport, just awesome. Our girl PJ Souls, Carrie, boy in plastic bubble, Halloween, rock and roll, high school, breaking away, Private Benjamin, and Stripes in six years. Married Dennis Quaid, and lost out to Carrie Fisher for Princess Leia, Star Wars. <laughs> That's a very different movie with PJ Souls. Yeah, it's probably. I don't think it works as well. I, I do I love PJ Souls though. Yeah. Rock and Roll High School. That's a great movie. She uh, really had it going for six years there. So, what stage the best? The production team decided to call these kids Cutters because the actual local name was Townies. For, uh, for Townies was uh, Stoners or Stonies. Yeah, and they were like people who watch this movie will think they're all druggies. Smart move. Also, Cutters is just a sick nickname. Cutters is great. And then it kind of comes full circle when the Simpsons have the stone cutters in that episode about like the, their Freemasons world too, so it all fits. That's all I have for what's age the best. Great shot, Gordo Award. Would you go the wide shot of the quarry or the wide shot of the last two laps? Uh, I mean, it, it, just for technical achievement, probably the last last two laps, although I just really like the, the setting of the quarry a lot. That was my Den of Thieves. I had that as well. I do love when the uh, Italians stick. I don't even know what it is. They're sticking between it's the like wheels, a, but you're like it's like an air pump, yeah. air pump, and they're just like it's just like the no, 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 don't do that, don't do that. Like then, as soon as it goes in, and you see the wheel snap, like that's a great, exciting moment. One thing on the quarry. When I was a little kid, I saw this movie in the theater, and you're like, whoa, that there's a place like that. Yeah. And then when you get older, you're like, man, that quarry is cool. That would be so much fun to go down there. Did you ever have now, anything like that? No. But now I see it as a parent. I'm like, God, that's so fucking dangerous. <laughs> Jesus. So many people could get hurt. And they actually did, right? Yeah. In that space. Yeah. 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 The Big Kahuna Burger were best use of food and drink. The uh, the dad eating pepperoni pizza in his car, listening to the race. Yeah. Looks like good pizza. Pretty relatable, yeah. Yeah. Although the whole thing with his, you know, her her trying to get him to eat healthier throughout the movie and him just, I just want french fries. <laughs> like, One of my passion points in movies... As you know, things that things that I love that are just stupid, like when they fuck up soccer scenes mm-hmm. in movies where it's just clear they just had people standing on a field and one person and they just don't <laughs> understand. I like when they get the pizza right in a movie yeah. and I hate when they get it wrong. 
If you're in pizza and the movie's going to be going for the rest of eternity on some streamer, make it look like a piece, piece of pizza I'd want to eat. Okay. Sometimes they'll just be like, yeah, yeah, tell Bob to go down and grab a pizza for the scene. And it's just like this gross. Yeah. Looks like it's been in one of those things that's been turning around for an hour. Yeah, yeah. It's dried out and congealed. Yeah, Whereas like, yeah. like in Can't Buy Me Love, when he gets the pizza, Ronald. Yeah. And the guys come in and he offers the pizza. It's like delicious. Like you feel for the dude. That so he do you took think his this pizza. Bloomington pizza is, is good? I think that pizza looked all right. Yeah. It was like a B minus. I, I mean, I wouldn't really expect 1979 Bloomington pizza to be mind blowing. Mm. I just want you guys to know, as a director, this would be a passion point of mine. Where like, there's a pizza scene. Guys. That would be like we all got the guys get, on set. Right? I want to see Bill eight really different cares. types yeah. of pizza. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Hard to believe Bill Simmons is breaking away sequel failed at the box office. He spent three hundred million dollars on pizza consultants. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he had David Chang doing his pizza. Yeah. Uh, we just had one of these in a movie in, that we did on the show uh, in uh, Along Came Polly, where Ben Stiller's having the pizza and Philip Seymour Hoffman takes it and it starts dripping all the oil yeah. onto his pizza. <laughs> but though, that pizza looks like scene. real New York pizza. Yeah. yeah, it's a passion point of mine, guys. Uh, Butch's Girlfriend Award, weak link of the film. What do you have? I, I'm going rogue on this one. Um, I don't really have a, a weak link. It's it's more just like, I'm not so sure I understood or needed like as much of Moocher's like weird, like I'm lifting weights in front of Nancy. We're going to get secretly married relationship. But like this movie is so lean, you don't really need yeah. to cut anything out of it. You're not, are you going to say Dennis Christopher? No. Okay. I was I was getting nervous because you've been you've been soft selling Dennis Christopher thus far. Uh, Hart Bachner in the bike race, just a fucking choke job. <laughs> yeah, it bothers oh, me that. every time. So that's I have that for picking Nick. It just bugs me so much. Yeah. yeah. Like, he why do you leave the inside open on the last fucking lap? I, I think know he was counting like a professional on Dave cyclist. not getting back in. I think he was like, I can coast. It takes now. the widest turn around. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, dude. This is it, man. You hug that la hug that track for one more. Yeah, he's a pretty See, boy. Leaves it wide open. He's not a winner. He doesn't have the grit. <laughs> Total choke it. job. That's why when they're on the ceremony at the end, yeah. he's got he's kind of happy for them because deep down he's like, I fucked this up. You this know was... what else he fucked up? Negotiating with Hans. You know? <laughs> Hans, Darn right. Bobby. Bobby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he thought he had the inside track on Hans and he didn't. Did you have a weak link? I don't really uh what's what's Paul Dooley's character's strategy as a car salesman. Like, his business of just selling lemons over and over again in this in Bloomington, Indiana, like, that's going to come back to bite him, right? True. But Is, isn't the Better Business Bureau going to get on that? I, I don't know if the Better Business Bureau was as mighty as it was. You know, like, I don't think that there was, like, a lemon law. I think you kind of went into those years. Because I bought a piece of shit 91 Ford Tempo that died on the way out of the lot. And they were just like, that'll be three grand to fix it. You know, like, immediately. So it's like, you you, you would get fucked back then on cars. Yeah, I, I do feel like that was just the late 70s and the 80s. It was like, if you bought a used car, you kind of got what you were asking for. Jeez. It's tough. It's really tough. What, it we live in a better country now? Is that what you're saying? We figured this out. Yeah, we have stuff like CarMax and yeah. places that actually like, nice. have guarantees. <laughs> yeah, you get to see like the actual history of the vehicle before you mm. buy it. Yeah. Back uh, then it was like, no, it runs great. Also, that was a classic, like that kid goes in there with like a pocket full of money and he's just like, I'm going to get this kid in a sports car. It's going to crap out on him. Fucking sob that I got that time. That's what I think. You'll never get over it. Never get over it. Oops, sobs. Thank God they went under. Uh, what stage the worst? Swimming with jeans on? I've just never understood it. <laughs> it's disgusting. Yeah. It's it's really like almost reprehensible behavior. I agree. Mike just keeps jumping in with his jeans on. It's like you're a sociopath. <laughs> we, we CR looks like he's swam with jeans on. I've never swum with jeans on. Okay, no. good. Uh what stage the worst? You? No, I would never. It's gross. But I just feel like you love to swim. I do, but I bring a suit. I bring trunks. Yeah. You bring a Gucci. <laughs> just go in your yeah. underwear. Like, what are you taking yeah. fucking yeah. jeans on? Yeah. You're gonna put them back on. This is a what stage the worst, um, just from a timing standpoint. So Jackie Earl Haley being in this movie, the casting of that was a big deal in 1979. Now nobody would care because he was Kelly Leak. Mm -hmm. He'd been in Bad News Bears one. He'd been in Breaking <laughs> Training. It's like holy shit, Kelly Leak's in this movie, and it was like impactful. He, we know who the other guys were. He is the biggest star in the movie, right? By far, Jackie yeah. Earl Haley. I yeah. wonder if that's Not why anymore. he gets those things to do that Chris was talking about. Even though Moocher yeah. is like maybe the least developed character in the movie. Yeah, that's probably why. Yeah, Robin Douglas's scooter. That's aged. Looks the worst. like it 
Yeah, it looks like Elon Musk made it as like a LARP in 2022. And okay. it, was it was the cyber truck of it's that era. It's just like a yeah. cyber truck scooter. It's so big. I just never saw a scooter like that in my life. What'd you have for what's age worse? Do you guys think that uh, massive recreational cycling is still big on this, college this campuses? Was my, this was mine. Just cycling. Because Lime scooters kind of took it those out of business, right? Like, yeah. Do you think a lot of guys... Do you think anyone's on a bike? On campus in Bloomington right now are cycling around. Not with aspirations to compete. In the little five. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys like cyclists? In Los Angeles, I do not. I've, yeah, I've done, I've done rants on this before. Yeah. No, I don't. I, I used people to People get mad, but I don't. I used to be ambivalent, and now I detest them. Yeah. The, people are, the cycling community will come after you. They have come after me. That's uh, fine. But I really don't appreciate I, their work. I understand that we should share the road. I don't yeah. think Los Angeles was made to share roads. I agree. I think this is the primary issue. Yeah. Like in, in New York London, City, it's you're actually just like, easier. Yep, everybody's cycling around. Like when you're <clears throat> you're in other cities, you're like, I get it. In New York, the 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 race is lost. Like you just are basically about to get mowed down yeah. by an e-bike at all times. Here it's just like, I don't know what to tell you, man. There's like three SUVs bearing down. There's a you. narrowness to the roadways in Los Angeles that makes it impossible to navigate. Yeah. It's like sorry, sorry that I'm just trying to drive straight on a road as you're as you're taking your two hour bike ride. Yeah. Yeah. And holding up traffic behind you. Well, the other thing too is like at the rise of EVs, I'm like, what's the case here? Like, sure, it's great for the environment, but it now keeps you in shape. Yeah. Sure, as a recreational yeah. activity, but not like on Sunset Boulevard at 9 a.m. <laughs> in gridlock traffic. I find that very confusing. I don't like the outfits either. The thing is, they're they get really uh, the cyclists get really upset. Yeah, they're gonna but get it's so like, mad. We should we, break this out and just like, yeah. no, fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> also, would you like would you time. let Ben or Zoe go like bike riding around Los Angeles? No, right? Good question. Well, he uses Ben uses the little uh the bird thing. The long yeah, scooters. Long he scooters. goes all over the place. Yeah. yeah. Another if thing he's that's... like, hey, I bought I bought a cycling outfit. I'm a psycho. I'd be like, get out. <laughs> You'd be like, Paul, you don't live here anymore. <laughs> what would you do if Ben came home and just started speaking Italian? There's there's definitely some some late seventies stuff with this movie that in two thousand twenty three we'd we'd probably want to be like, should we take this guy to to talk to somebody? <laughs> he's taught he's been talking in Italian eighty percent of the time. Yeah, did you yeah. ever? Is like, something going wrong? You here? don't like a weird guy. No, but it's just at some point I think the parents there, there's there's difference being eccentric and yeah. seeming like you're yeah, a yeah. lunatic. Yeah. yeah, I think I here's how I read that in the movie. It's a, that period in your life where you don't know who you are going to be and what you're going to do. And for people who go to college, they re get to reinvent themselves when they go to college. But if you stay home, he's about to have that reinvention. So he's like, hey, my, his idea of reinvention is I'm Italian now. Yeah. yeah. So I, I like it as a character choice, but you can see that Paul Dooley's character is like, what the fuck happened to my son? Yeah. Right. <laughs> but I will say that there's a quick moment in, I'd never caught this before, in the opening scene with Barbara Barry and Paul Dooley, they're talking about Dave and she's like basically like ever since he's started cycling, he's gotten over like a bunch of his health problems, mm. which I never caught before. But like Dave must have been like a sickly kid, and then like starts cycling and be, you know, those that's the positives of cycling. Yeah. yeah, it's good. It's always good to get exercise. The yeah. negatives are you have to wear a fucking outfit like you're gonna <laughs> like, <laughs> like you're gonna be in extra in a movie or something, <laughs> and then you just yell at people who are just trying to drive straight on a road. Yeah. That seems to be what cycling is. Did Lance Armstrong kill cycling? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. I mean, and your best yeah. ever was Lance Armstrong. Yeah. Uh, more would say the worst. Serenading someone outside their college dorm room is probably now yeah. you get arrested. Also pretending to be Italian. <laughs> yeah. Just being like, I'm going to go yeah, like, on multiple dates with a girl and just be like, oh, I got the arena. <laughs> this is one of those, Her, she would in 2024, it'd be like one of those Apple News essays. Yeah. I was, I was deceived by an Italian <laughs> cyclist. It's in the cut. Who's yeah, from Indiana. In That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's funny. Does it bother you that Mike never actually smokes a cigarette? It, I mean, he I does understand explain the explanation, it. but he looks so cool. It's just like a wish that he would either not have the cigarettes or smoke them. He looks at the Marlboro man. And he's like, that's they're what driving by, yeah. but he's not hasn't made the. What's age the worst? They made a TV series based on the film. It aired in 1980 and a little bit in 1981. It starred Sean Cassidy, who's coming off the Hardy Boys and was a big teen idol. David Cassidy's brother. Barbara Barry decided to be in the movie again. 
I mean, in the TV show, and so did Jackie Earl Haley and John Ashton. This has got to be the only time someone is Academy Award nominated and then immediately was like, I'll do the TV version of this story. That's a pretty weird choice. Obviously, not a lot of great parts for Barbara Barry at this time in Hollywood, but still. Back then, so many people watched TV. Maybe not as weird of a choice. I think it would be a weirder choice now. I couldn't think of another example of someone porting over so quickly. Yeah. Usually when when something like that happens in your career, you're like, all right, put me in a bigger movie. The entire pilot is on YouTube. It's weird. Is it any good? No. Okay. I saw John I Ashton came back for a couple of episodes as well. He did. The other weird thing, this is a what stage or worse just because this seems crazy. NBC paid $5 million to screen the film on television on uh, May 5th, 1980. So it was like five months after the movie came out. And, uh, and it was way ahead of its time. Yeah, they outbid HBO, right? Up at HBO. Yeah. But now you think like five months between release and showing on TV would be like forever. Yeah. So it's just a what stage the worst. I'm like, now that, what is that time span now? Three weeks? Yeah. The thing that's interesting about that though is that the Oscars that year were in April. And so it was two weeks after the Oscars and 50 million people watched the Oscars that year. So yeah. I think the thinking was... Capitalize on Most the people didn't see this movie. Yeah. And... It's it nominated in all the big categories. Do you think it would be like a good idea for like NBC to just be like, hey, it's Saturday night. We're showing the fall guy. This yeah, I mean, what, they did do that in the 90s. Yeah. Um, this is what we grew up with. You can see some of the uh, some of the ads are on YouTube where it's like, tonight for the first time ever, Rocky 2. Yeah. CBS. What was it? Was it Andor that they were showing on ABC? Andor was on ABC. I think, I feel like they did this with Raiders maybe or something. Like CBS maybe showed it. I can't remember. But if you're yeah. a movie, you would rather premiere on... Netflix or Amazon or I just mean at this point right? yeah you reach or more people NBC? yeah, yeah. yeah. That's one more would take worse on, yeah. Dennis Christopher and we were waiting for this lied about his age said he was born in 1955 but he was actually born in 1950 he was 28 when he made the movie it was back in the era before IMDb when you could just shave five years off yeah. your the rare male lie you hear this about a lot of female yeah stars. I guess it works for the character. A guy reinventing yeah. himself constantly. Are you prepared to announce that you also were born in 1950? <laughs> so, he his next movie, because he it felt like he was becoming a star, and then his next movie was Fade to Black. I really like Fade to Black. So I saw it in the theater with my dad when I was 10, and we both hated it, and I've oh. never liked Dennis Christopher after that. Oh. So it's Did like you the breaking see it away. because of but then it's away? become. It's such a cool movie. We saw it because of Breaking Away under the rule of, Oh, I love that guy. What's the next movie? And you just get that one mulligan with the audience. I mean, it's a very strange movie, but it's totally a movie that predicts like crazy movie people. <laughs> like It's such a clever idea for a movie. I wrote this down from Wikipedia. CR, this is Fade to Black. Have you seen this? Mm-mm. A shy, lonely film buff embarks on a killing spree against those who be- browbeat and betray him, <laughs> all the while stalking his idol, a Marilyn Monroe lookalike. I mean, it sounds kind of good. like kind of, kind of a little fan like on fantasy. I mean, yeah. it is it fantasy is a serial killer. It, yeah. it, 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 it is, but uh, it's really well done. Like the makeup is really good. Like he yeah. gets dressed up as famous movie characters and kills people, and it's a very eccentric movie. I haven't seen it since we saw it in the theater. The weird part is the lead actress in it was some I forget her name, but she was is Chris Pine's mom and was pregnant with Chris Pine as they were filming Faith wow. the Black. That's yeah. right. That's Total right. weird movie thing. What yeah. a piece of trivia. Yeah. Her name is her is it Linda not, Carriage? It's not, it's not it's doesn't end with Pine. Um oh, I have one more what's age the worst. Yeah. Uh these guys just wouldn't have this much idle time. You know, so much of this movie is them being like, you want to walk around town three times, watch football practice then maybe go to the get pizza and look at cars. And it's like, these dudes would just all be playing video games all day. Yeah, it feels like... Man, I miss this about life. It feels like there would be more pot with these guys, right? In the late 70s? Although I think that they, they're they all athletes, so maybe they're not. Huh. Maybe they're not getting too stoned. Cyril seems like he would fucking pack a bowl, but like... I had, I had no idea how good I had it when I just had nothing to do. Yeah. That was fucking awesome. And you were just like, I'm looking at this baseball card for two hours. Yeah, I was just like, I'm going to go for a walk down to the mall. I'm 19. There's nothing going on right now. I have no responsibilities whatsoever. Just all the 19-year-olds out there listening, (laughs) savor that shit. Don't play video games. Go outside. Look around. (laughs) Yeah, get hit by a cyclist. (laughs) (laughs) Just, yeah, put put some tight, what are those cycling shorts? What are they called? Just racing shorts? Yeah, Yeah, bike shorts. Put some bike shorts on. A helmet. (laughs) 
I'm definitely going to wear bike shorts the next rewatchables <laughs> well, to remember, trigger you. Remember in Signals, Singles when she dates yeah. the bike guy and she buys the whole cycling outfit? Yeah, yeah. What do you have for uh, the Ruffalo Hannah Rubinick Partridge overacting word? I think Dooley goes for it a couple of times, mm. right? Uh, Refund! Of, yeah, yeah. yeah, a lot of deadpan kind of spit takes. He's stuff. hamming it up, yeah. Was there a better title for this movie? It was originally called Bambino. This movie was called Cutters. Is it better or worse? I just think that breaking away indicates <sighs> sports and triumph somehow in a way that the Cutters... And breaking wouldn't. away from your family? Yeah. yeah, I agree. It's a good title. I like it. And Cutters not, has a different connotation now, yeah. too. So, What do you have for the CR thinks Luke Wilson could be... Harrison Ford, how to take a word. Uh, it's probably like a little bit more sincere, but it's just like, I think this is actually a movie about parents getting to know their child before he leaves than mm. it is about sports. Like, I just like, when you watch this and you watch like the complete circle of these people be like, what, like this kid's 19, like, what did we do? Who is this person? And all the way around to like finally seeing him and seeing what he can do. And between the passport scene and the walking at night scene and then the end with, with the father showing up for the race. I think it's like, and then the father's on the bike. So it's like, you know, parents finally getting to know their kids. Uh, mine was Peter Yates understands America better than most American directors. Like, ah. Most of his movies are set in America and they're like incredible portraits of these cities. Like Eddie Coyle is an amazing New England movie. This is an amazing story about Indiana. Like yeah. it, fe it feels, especially the last 40 minutes, basically just feels like a documentary. Yeah. yeah. Like all the extras and the setting and the world that you're observing. Like it's just an incredible movie. I'm going old school with a hot, hottest take. Okay. Dennis Quaid and Costner, if you just flip them, I think it's, I think Costner gets stuck with the Dennis Quaid roles and Quaid, Quaid <clears throat> takes off. I think Dennis Quaid is Costner five years too so early. So if Quaid... Right down to like he could be the lead in Yellowstone right now. Well, so if you, you literally see, too put early. Quaid in American Flyer and Costner in Breaking Away, do you think that the... Well, the ages are different because I think Quaid's okay. older. But Quaid I think if 70. you just flipped it, I think Quaid could have been in No Way Out. I think he could have been American Flyers. I think he could have been in Bull Durham. I think he could have done almost any Costner part. So Dennis Quaid and Kevin Costner just flip movies are separated by nine months in age. But Costner got a much later start. Yeah, Costner's start is what six years out because Big Chill was 83 yeah. and he got yeah. cut out of it. So yeah. he's really in like Silverado. And then the two meet in Wyatt Earp. That's right. So you I think then it's a, switch the Wyatt Earp roles. I we, think it's an underrated wow. market yeah. correction. I like that. So Kevin Costner plays Doc Holliday. But that's a crazy story about what happened to Dennis Quaid on that movie. You know that story? That he lost all that weight to play yeah. Holiday, and he was effectively diagnosed with anorexia. And he got so sick. And that like totally changed his life. Like, yeah. And it, I kind of flipped his arc of stardom in a lot of ways, <laughs> too. Um, it's a... Quaid is a really weird guy um, and has had a really interesting career and sometimes is amazing. Like, he's amazing in Big Easy. He's amazing in Great Balls of Fire. He's great in Flesh and Bone, right? Yeah. 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 Um, but he probably, like, went up... He was probably, like, in the conversation for if Costner passes, we'll go with Quaid 20, 30 it's times a good market in, in yeah. Hollywood history. Yeah. And Costner could have been in Big Easy. Oh, Costner yeah, for sure. easily could have been this guy. And Quaid could have been in No Way Out. Quaid yeah. could have been yeah. in... Quaid could have been in JFK. Like, he could have been in a lot of those movies. You like the Big Easy? I do. Yeah, yeah I really do good. And then uh, one more Quaid thing. He's not the greatest sports movie actor of all time, but I think he's a first ballot sports so he's, movie Everybody's Hall of Famer. all American. This. Breaking Away, Tough Enough, which yeah. is a movie you can't even find anymore. But never we, seen it. I love Tough Enough. He's ba it's a tough man contest. Okay. He's got to fight. You got to you got to get to advanced to the finals and he's just getting the shit kicked out of him for a week trying to win like a hundred thousand dollars it's good everybody's all american any given sunday in the rookie those are his best five but he's also in the long game he's an american underdog he's mm -hmm. dick for meal mm -hmm. he's in soul surfer yep it's been in eight sports movies <laughs> he's so believable in both any given sunday and the rookie yeah like yeah. the rookie's kind of his yeah i like quaid I'm pro Quaid. Sadly, he's not even the craziest guy in his family because he's Randy Quaid's brother. What did we think Cap in any given Sunday's like comp was in real life? Uh, wasn't it like um, uh, who was the Chargers QB in the seventies? 
Dan Fouts? Fouts. Okay. Isn't, isn't he like kind of a Fouts type? Like, is he a yeah. game manager? Is he like Matt Ryan? Like, what, like, how good? I think he was like an awesome QB who just got, took a lot of hits. Okay. On the, like, on Trey the downside. Aikman, late seven, late 90s type of guy. Yeah. The uh, best that guy award. I mean, it's tough because this movie came out so long ago, but Robin Douglas to me is kind of a that guy where you'd see her in whatever she'd pop up and be like, oh, breaking away. But I don't know if a lot of people know it's Robin Douglas. It yeah. never really happened for her. Never happened. It's Paul also Dooley. a movie where the that guys are actually, they get real roles. You know, like right. Paul Dooley is a that guy, but he's like the... Barbara Barry too. I guess Barbara Barry's a that guy because she'd be she like the mom for breaking Oscar. away, but yeah. she's yeah. also Barbara Barry. She's a huge stage star at this point. I think Paul Dooley and Barbara Barry are kind of like elite that guy and yeah. gals. Yeah. You know, they're like Graduated at the top level. Guys, yeah. yeah. I couldn't find any casting what ifs. I do have a, a director what if. What is it? So apparently like the, the two scripts, it was like Bambino and Eagle of Naptown were both Steve Tisch scripts that were kind of about Bloomington. And uh, the the Eagle of Naptown script, which was about, like, I don't know how much of it is it about or whether the site, how much cycling was in it, but Bob Fosse was like, I wanted to Oh, yeah, this. I read this. Yeah. yeah. and it, I almost didn't believe this one. I, I read it, too. It and he, seemed too crazy. <clears throat> Why would Bob Fosse want to direct Breaking Away? I don't know. I mean, didn't he do... Well, it's, uh, this is the year of all that jazz. Yeah. So it's kind of an interesting sliding doors because it's kind of, you know, it's near the end of his career. Maybe he's, I think, I think at that time he was, he had just done Lenny and he's trying to figure out how to not just do musical stuff. Mm. And so he's trying to yeah. break what the expectations. I think he's a star 80, like right after this. Yeah. So he's like, how do I not star just be the musical 80. guy? I know. <laughs> I sadly saw that one in the theater too. It's a tough watch. Dion Waiters, the truck driver. Oh, the guy going four, five. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Bachner's in too much. I was going to say the Italians too. Oh, the Italians. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah good. that's a winner. That's good. I don't have a recasting couch director or city for this. I think it's really well cast. So we'll go to Tony Romo or Chris Collinsworth for the director's commentary. <laughs> oh, Mike, he's pretending to be Italian to get in her pants, <laughs> yeah. but also living out a fantasy of escape from his blue collar Indiana trappings. You gotta love that. I thought it was more like... Uh... Rod left the inside open, Jim. He's taking the inside. <laughs> left, the, left the inside track open, Jim. <laughs> Two laps to go. <laughs> I think Romo doing the race would have been amazing. It would have been great. Yeah. They're taping him on, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Half faster research. The little 500 bicycle race still held annually at Indiana University. <laughs> Shout out to Kate Hollowell, by the way, who was super excited that we're doing yeah. this. Yeah. yeah. Did she tell you, like, is the. Little I was five sending her a couple a Wikipedia deal? things. Yeah, she's. She said the quarry, they've really made it impossible to go there. Everyone wants to go there and they've just... But it's because it's setting, so dangerous, right? Yeah. They're yeah. basically putting like bear traps and grenades to make <laughs> you not want to even go near there. Yeah. When, when Dooley goes back to visit the the stone the factory, cutting, the, the, yeah. does that, is that like when you would go back to Kim's and you'd be like, yeah. this is where this is where it all happened That's for right. me. This is where I was born. The uh, I guess you could still go back to Newberry. I could. I did. You did recently? La two summers ago. Live pod yeah. from Newberry. You guys should do that. It's, it's That'd be amazing. Yeah, the Newberry Street one is diminished okay. a little bit. There's okay. just like a lot of stuff in the basement. They have Blu-rays there? I think they do, actually, yeah. Uh, nice. Tessich was an alternate rider in 62 for the Phi Kappa Psi team in the Little 500 and had a teammate that rode 139 of the 200 laps and crossed the line as the winner, which became the model for the main character. Yeah. There you go. Used car lot's gone in real life. Paglia's Pizza is now Opie Taylor's, hmm. which I, I guess is like a, a place in Indiana. Um, and then uh, the slap when she hits him, apparently six takes and just pounding poor Dennis Christopher. <laughs> and then uh, they wanted 20,000 extras for the final race for the students and only 3,000 showed up. So they had to get... Like they had to compress Get frisky it. with yeah. The, uh, it looks Jim like Rangles. it is a lot of people. It does though. seem like a lot. Yeah. Apex Mountain. Dennis Christopher, unquestionably. Mm -hmm. So you want to? Did you have a Dennis Christopher? Just that he didn't turn out to have the career you would expect after being the star of an Oscar-nominated movie and basically his first big role, and then went on to just be a character actor and has done 
Good work over the years. A lot years. of TV. You yeah. go to the IMDb, it's a lot of... Pops up in yeah. Django. Yeah. 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 I think part of it was he was probably being like almost 30 by the time this movie came out. You don't get like those last couple of years of the yeah, young guy the, roles. Once the birth certificate got, yeah. got seen, you know? So last night I popped in Fade to Black just to like remember it a little bit. And I watched an interview with him that was on the on the Blu-ray. When you say pop, you have the Blu-ray of Fade to I do, Black. I do. Beautiful Vinegar Syndrome edition. Jesus it's Christ. an awesome... Psycho. He's great, making great fun movie. of the cyclist um, who's got a Fade to Black <laughs> Blu-ray. Good movie. Uh, <laughs> but uh, he was talking in that interview where he was just like, yeah, and then I like... This part of the character didn't make sense, so like I rewrote this, and like he had a real like, oh, you know, like I'm thing. running the show kind of vibe. I like to get my oh, teeth boy. into the script. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, maybe he got a little too big for his britches or something. Mm. Dennis Quaid, no. Robin Douglas, probably. I lonely guy. She's really good. When he when he comes home and she's in bed with the other guy and he's like talking to her and she's cheating on him while yeah. he's talking to her is you know that's a great great scene in that movie. Jackie Earl Haley, no way. Kelly Leak. Kelly Leak batting every inning in the Astrodome is probably his apex mountain. <laughs> I think Little Children is number two. Yeah. Oh, man. He's so creepy in that. Yeah. And then Watchmen. Cycling yeah. movies, yes. Yeah. I think it's better than American Flyer, yeah. even though I really like American Flyer. What's the, uh, isn't, the, what's the, I guess it's not cycling, it's just, what's the Kevin Bacon movie? Quicksilver. Quicksilver, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah we tried to plan out a cycling month and we just well, couldn't get there. Well, there's Premium Rush, Quicksilver, and the and American Flyer and Breaking Away. Mm -hmm. But I, I wonder whether that would be rock bottom month What about the Ben Foster as Lance Armstrong movie? Oh, God. Oh, yeah. yeah. I right. forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. They even released that? Yeah, oh, yeah. I saw it. Used Cars? No. Daniel Stern? No. City Slickers? Home Alone. Home Alone? Yeah. It was yeah. like the same year, right? Yeah. yeah. We, we did this. He was already. killing it. And was... And was the, the VO for Wonder was, Years? Was Wonder Years still on TV when yeah. Home Alone hit too? Daniel Stern, once upon a time, like one of the 20 most known faces in America. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> probably, I mean, for our whole generation, he probably yeah. is. Uh, pissy Italians, definitely. <laughs> Papa you! Yeah. <laughs> His bike was a 1978 Massey Grand Criterium, so I'm going to say Apex Mountain for that. Okay. Peter Yates, no. Is it Bullet? Right? It's got to be Bullet, right? Oscar nominated here. And then I think Oscar oh, nominated right. again but Bullet in the, is for like The Dresser. A, a bigger hit, right? Bullet sets up like... I don't know. Yeah, he did get nominated. Did have a best picture. Maybe it's it a is. A movie full of unknowns. Yeah. Hart Bachner? No, it's Die Hard. Die Hard. Or PCU, which he directed. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Love PCU. Indiana movies? No. Eh? What's the other one? Hoosier, Hoosiers, right? It's Hoosiers, Hoosiers versus this. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'd probably say Hoosiers. Is there I any think really it's... good serial killers from Indiana? <laughs> <laughs> I Henry, guess... Henry Lee Lucas? Who's the Norman Mailer guy? The guy that Norman, Executioner's song? Is that Indiana or is that Oklahoma? Best, uh, Nebraska. I, I, that was, yeah. Nebraska, yeah, that sounds right. Best Indiana serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Because, <laughs> um, you know, BTK, you know, they, they got BTK in Kansas. I went to Indiana one time. Did you? I went, I went to Super Bowl 46, where uh, the Giants defeated the New England Patriots. It was an excellent Super Bowl. <laughs> you went to that? <laughs> I did. Were you at that game? Yeah. 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 Do you think Indianapolis is a good host city? I went to the Hoosiers gym that day. That's right. I wrote about it that because yeah. I thought after going to the Hoosiers gym, I thought the Pats were going to win. And then somehow. Why did so, you think that? <laughs> did you just because I thought it was like going to be the greatest day of my life? Oh. I also got out of a speeding ticket that day, which is the only time I've ever been let go. Huh? Did, did so you? I was like, naturally, they're going to win now. So I had a phone interview with you for Grantland this week when you were in Indianapolis. Do you remember oh, really? this? Yeah. No. Yeah. But and it was, was like, before the game. It was before the game. Because if it was after the game, you wouldn't be here right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think I told you that I was going to the game because I was going to the game for work. I went for GQ, but uh, yeah, that was that was the only time I went, and it was cold and not not that nice. BTK killer, where is he? Kansas. Yeah, that was my favorite thing anyone's ever done on any podcast I've ever done is Bill Hader imitating Lauren Michaels <laughs> talking about being friends with the BTK killer. In the Lord Michael's voice, <laughs> I went to the BTK. <laughs> he did the whole thing. It was so fucking. It's good. funny you bring up Hater because the I was thinking what uh, Dennis Christopher's character is doing Italian. He just sounds like Vinny Vedecci. Yeah, you know? right. <laughs> yeah. 
he had a whole bit about, yeah, I was at a restaurant with uh, Steve Martin and BTK. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, oh, and last Apex Mountain. Impossible to get Blu-rays. Yeah. Sean said this Blu-ray is like $400 on eBay. RIP Twilight Time, one of the great distributors, they made a version of this movie that is like $300 on eBay right now. So what happens with that? It's like, this isn't, what where are the rights to this? To kick it I don't know, or? it's just out of print. I mean, it's, the studio is 20th Century Fox, yeah. so I think it's a little hard to get Disney excited about re-releasing this movie on physical. Mm -hmm. so. What's the hardest Blu-ray to get right now? What, like, what's like the granddaddy of them all? Is it the machines eight millimeter? Like tape? that, some, one that exists, but on eBay, right. it's I'm like trying to think twenty five hundred dollars. Uh, I honestly don't know the answer to that. I'm sure there is a good answer, um, but there are a few movies that people really want physical versions of that we uh, can't get, like the, the like the Heartbreak Kid, the Elaine May movie. That's like uh, a re, like a movie that doesn't exist on physical because the company that owns it is like a medical supply company. You've made a letterbox list about this, haven't you? Mm. I don't, but it's a good idea. You should dress Most like a wanted. cyclist and, yeah. and make a letterbox list. You know what we wanted for the longest time? The streams. <laughs> we wanted The Abyss, and then The Abyss was released yeah. just this year. Really? Yeah. yeah. That's a movie I would never want to watch again. Okay. Is that a bad take? I think there are movies I'd want to watch less than The Abyss. But... It's flawed. It's definitely flawed. It's I like, like it. an, I saw it once, and I think I'm good movie. I think it's one of those things where because you couldn't watch it, it made you want to watch it more. And didn't mm. they take it away from him so that's not his cut that came out in the theaters? Yes. Or there was stuff that they did to yes. it? Yeah. Okay. Cruise or Hanks? This is a good one. I, I, I'm, I, I'll give you Hanks on this one. Yeah. But Especially you know, like Bosom Buddies era Hanks. Yeah. But like, again, Cruise as Mike. Well, Cruz's Height Jackie Earl Haley. Yeah. Moocher, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, shots he would have played that Not one. shots. I mean, it's just like he's the whole, the whole relationship is like, you know, every time somebody calls him shorty, he flips out. Also, I, I feel like Hanks could have been a good serial. Yeah. And Hanks today could Hanks do, could have played the lead though and done the Italian. He could and, today he could have do done. the dad. Totally. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's good. But Cruz could not do the dad. Big win for Hanks. Can't imagine that. No. I think Cruz could have done the Dennis Quaid part, but it would have probably been felt a little off. Racehorse rock band wrestler fantasy team name The Cutters is pretty strong. Hmm. The Cutters is probably a rock band. The Cutters. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Saw the Cutters. The Cutters. Saw the minute. Oh, Ray. The Cutters are back. <laughs> <laughs> the Cutters third album. Is I know real. two different friends of mine went to the Stones at Gillette Stadium last night. Raving? Did they rave the about The Rolling it? Stones? They went to see the Rolling Stones and said it was great. Yeah, Greenwald said that they're they're nailing it. it well, he didn't yeah. see it, but he's like, the reviews of the Stones is like, they're going they're going nuts. This is, this is the whole... This is nuts. And this is not... I know. I don't... And, and I don't, the Stones are soundtracking the Bear trailer? It's fucking the Stones. Stones are back. The Beatles no. had their run. No, this you know? is not. Chris is, you know, he's Peter in the pocket Jackson's of big Stones. Peter reanimating their, their bodies and stuff. The Stones are still doing it. <laughs> this is how LeBron... <laughs> no thanks, Peter Jackson. <laughs> we'll just play three hours at the fucking Gillette. <laughs> this is how LeBron beats uh, MJ. He just keeps playing. Yeah. yeah. It's like yeah. LeBron's yeah. 58. He's getting bone marrow injected into his hips. That, all these phony longevity votes, you know, for like all, t all, all defense in the eight, season 36. Yeah. I, don't, I don't buy it. Picking nits. So Robin Douglas's character, who's got to be one of the best looking women at Indiana University. Mm -hmm. She's dating Rod, a Rod. handsome guy. Rod. He's got a car. He's also stepping He's out. He's cool. On her. Yeah. She's gonna get involved with this weirdo Italian cyclist guy. Yeah. My picking it is also like, is she really so dim that she can't pick up on this guy? Is not Italian. Yeah. She didn't have more questions. Yeah. So where do you live? His accent is pretty poor. What, yeah. Like, yeah. how come I didn't see you in class today? You know. He's never got homework. Maybe she's not that smart. Or maybe she's just suspending disbelief because she likes the ride. Picking nits. Mike hitting his head on the rock never really sat well with me. Like you don't think he would do something like that? I don't know. He's a good athlete. I thought you were going to say the he would be like concussed. And, you know, well, that you too. Know. He yeah. also, he'd hit his net. It had to be out. But yeah. The whole thing didn't really work. I have two more, but do you have any good There's ones? just no fucking way that Rod is clapping for the cutters at the end of that race. He is definitely yeah. filing a grievance, you know, about, like, taping his pedal or anything. Like, he is he is not doing that. 
Uh, where he's just like, yeah, respect to you guys. They've been fighting the entire movie. Where would you rank that against Billy Zabka graf- <laughs> grabbing the All Valley Karate Trophy and handing it to Daniel Sun? It's up there. <laughs> Here you go, LaRusso. <laughs> <laughs> you're right LaRusso um, that's the worst of all of those yeah the only other thing that was a nitpick was I don't think I've noticed this the other times I've seen this movie but how quickly they go from the bowling alley brawl to like the president of the university is like you guys all need to do a bike race right <laughs> Yeah, Good that's a pretty though. weird scene. It's yeah. like it, it 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 makes the race more fun but it's a little odd and using the real dean from the school so why would the Italian cycling team come to fucking Indianapolis to do a hundred race? Like, I don't know. What's Bill. the point of that? I was wondering about this myself, and I was like, "Are these guys on a tour across America?" That, but that's a really needed more question. info. Yeah, I don't know if this would have been their first stop for the Cinzano. Tribe. Well, I think that I imagine that they're going across the country in some capacity. It would or not something. surprise me though if this actually happened. The movie is so specific. Yeah. And and Tessic has so many details that it would be a weird thing to invent. And if it's a cycling crazy town because they have the little five, the five maybe yeah, the Italians yeah. show up. Can you imagine though if it's just like every time you're trying to drive out of Bloomington, it's like, oh, it's another cycling race. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. I have a I have a, like an external picking knit. Yeah. Which is that uh, Dennis Christopher was nominated for Best Juvenile Actor at the Young Artist Awards. <laughs> this year. 20 he was years 29 old. years old. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> My only other one is I don't just don't think Robin Douglas is ever talking to Mike again. Not Mike, uh, Dave. Because she runs into him near the yeah. end. She's like, hey, I'm going to Italy with my family. It's like, you're definitely not talking to this guy again. You've yeah. already told yeah. campus police, like, if this guy's near my <laughs> room, know, please you know, take him down. You never know what, like, it's going to float somebody's boat. Maybe she's like, this guy was really into me. Yeah. So much so that he created mm. a different persona. Might have been a turn on. I think she could have found other people at Indiana University. It was either him or Rod. Get into her. Yeah. yeah. Rod. Villain's name Rod. Should we put that for Apex Mountain? Yeah. Villain, just that villain name that's really up there. Honestly, up there with Hans. Like if Sean had had a boy instead of a girl and we're like, what's the name going to be? He's like, Rod Fantasy. <laughs> we'd be like, what? Yeah, is it, does he already is have it, a head? Is fund? it Roderick? Is that what that is? Is that what that's short for? Who is, how many kids out there are just named Rod? <sighs> I, I, I just know? don't know. It'd be like naming your son Shaft. We were watching the Brady Bunch last week when they go to Kings Island and Greg is hitting on this girl behind the counter named Marge. Where do you find the time? Are you honestly? just on Tubi? Uh, it's like, on Amazon. Okay. Who, who are kids. you watching Brady Bunch with? I have kids. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Imagine if I was like, Alice, we're going to watch the Brady Bunch. <laughs> How would that go over? Let me tell you something. The Brady Bunch is amazing. <laughs> you can't even believe how good the Brady Bunch is. I lo- I watched it all the time as a kid. I haven't yeah. seen it in 25 no, it's, years. It's like the structure of it and how it goes. And I like the last season when he's got that. When, uh, he's, he's really fl- Robert Reed has the afro. Yeah. yeah, you've got Oliver on the brain recently. I know you heard me bring him up on a pod recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it's, it's on Amazon. What can I tell you? Sequel, prequel, prestige TV, all broadcast are untouchable. <laughs> I think it's an untouchable. I, I'm willing to have the all black cast discussion for this, and I don't. I don't know if cycling would be the sport. No, it's in but Gary, I, Indiana. Oh yeah, team from Gary. Yeah, comes to Bloomington to race. I think I would be good. And you just it's an interesting one. Who would you Who would you cast? Who like for you, now, you know, it's like it's Richard Pryor. Oh, back then, yeah, in 1979. What's the 1979? I think Richard Pryor I think might he'd not blown have been himself in the best up by then. Shape for yeah, cycling. It's a good point. It's a good point. Who's a, I mean, it's right, it's right at the beginning of the Denzel rise. I mean, he's doing theater. At 79, that time. Eddie Murphy. Carbon copy. Eddie's yeah. too young. Too young? <clears throat> well, he's a college kid. Eddie's like 17 at that yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Morgan, um, Morgan Freeman? I don't know. They're just, I mean, they, they didn't, Spike Lee always talks about this. They didn't make movies for like six years that had black people in it, basically. This is a whole Tarantino thing when he was talking about how important she's got to have it was. I just saw this on the internet. I yeah. thought it was really interesting. In the aftermath of the black exploitation era, there's like a dearth it's, of black films between 1980 and, on TV and 1985. Too. It's like yeah. one of the craziest stretches yeah. in the history of well, pop like culture. Robert Townsend, The Wayans, like it's a very that comes short late list. 80s, yeah, though. yeah. There was like this two year stretch where it was like Isaac the bartender, Gary Coleman, the Jeffersons. 
This is pretty rough. Is this movie better with Wayne Jenkins, Danny Trejo, Sam Jackson, J.T. Walsh, Byron Mayo, Harling Mays, Evil Laughing with Ramon Raymond, the Hanson Brothers, or Philip Baker Hall? <laughs> this is going to be the hardest degree of difficulty of these that I've ever done, so give me, give me some leeway here. Clear out. Maledenzio, <laughs> nay Dave! No sapevo che stavo perlando con un super ciclista! Continue a guidare a la varia in un cavo un pompello ragazzone! <laughs> Was that you're going away for a long fucking time? It was, yeah. It was basically you'll <laughs> you be working, you better like go that? work back at the quarry. It was literally a long fucking time. I basically translated. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Italian Wayne, Wayne Jenkins. Yeah. That might that might have to be the last one. I don't know where, where do we go after Italian Wayne Jenkins. I deeply apologize to anyone who speaks Italian that was for great. what I just did. I, I didn't see it. that coming at all. Yeah. Was... I thought for sure you're going to go Handsome Brothers. <laughs> Hands of Brothers oh, just has yeah. another cycling team. Just hanging team. out at the bowling alley. No, one, are the, yeah. one of the other cycling teams. They're just like trying to start yeah. fights with everybody. When it when uh when <laughs> when Dave sings and you just have one of the Hansons going, listen to the fucking song. <laughs> 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 uh, just one Oscar who gets it. We have an answer. The screenplay. Oh yeah, probably an answer. More questions. I have one for you. Let's hear. It. How long do you think you would you could handle? Ben doing Dave's Italian bit. Like, how long before you're like, we got to call it professional? I know we, we referenced this earlier, but like, if it's, it's like five days. Yeah. Like, as the like father, Ben's having as a, a friend. meltdown. What are we doing? <laughs> talking in Italian constantly. So, as, as a dad, you're saying, Yeah, I'd be like, what's going but on? But if you were Mike, would you be like, my friend is going through it. He's having a moment. I they think I'd probably, I'd play it out because it was working with like the hottest girl at Indiana University. So I'm like, Good all point. right. Good point. Let's play this out. Right. Dave's on to something here. Yeah. Did Mike eventually become a 28-year-old college QB like Scott Bakula in Necessary <laughs> Roughness? Incredible. <laughs> That's my unanswerable question. I think he's Is a, the sequel of this I Mike joins Indiana University <laughs> yeah. cuz the quarterback two quarterbacks went down. He's still got eligibility, you know? <laughs> and Mike just leaves the quarry and now he's playing in games. I love it. That's actually my unanswerable question was was Mike any good at QB? Oh, you can tell. Yeah. You, you think, think he so? had the juice? Yeah. Because he's kind of shying away from the big stage but a couple of times. He's going to be cap His confidence is shot. Yeah. Rod took his confidence. I don't have any other enhanceables. I have one. What is the upside of winning the little 500? Get a cool trophy. Like, is it just a trophy? It seems like a lot of work. Feels like money should have been do you think, in there. Do you think Dave got a break on tuition? Oh. That's interesting. Yeah. Because... Hmm. because. Paul Dooley was running the, the Lemon House of cars. Didn't have all that dough. My oh, in-state in state tuition. I don't know yeah. whether it's a nitpick or an unanswerable, but I've been to Indiana. It's fucking hot. Kate Howell will back me up on this. Like the weather like is hot. There's hot stretches where yeah. it's like, when I say hot, it's like nobody can practice sports from 11 to 1 o'clock because it's actually a health danger. So mm -hmm. it's it gets like super crazy humid crazy like if you have allergies my daughter trained there for soccer a couple times hmm. and it just like destroyed her and but this is in the summer so they're filming this in like fall spring but the, it didn't tap into the race must be like may though right yeah because it it's got to be at the end of the college i just yeah. think there's semester, a right? chance it was like 100 degrees hmm. with like 100 percent humidity yeah that probably also like for the swimming in jeans that thing probably they get pretty cooked yeah pretty fast. yeah indiana's hot that's my indiana take What's your double feature choice here? American Flyer. Great call. Fade to black. Well, for the Christopher heads out there, <laughs> look at, that could be a good choice. Dennis <laughs> Christopher heads. The worst Reddit board on the planet. I was trying to think of the right Yates movie, and I'm not sure that he ever made a movie quite like this ever again. You I know? didn't love his 80s. He he reteams with Tessich a couple yeah. times, right? Like, what are the other he, Is suspect that he did? Uh, uh, Eleni, I never saw this 1985 movie. Um, I just think he had one more really great early '80s action movie in him. You know, like he could have done like First Blood, something like that. Yeah, just done a yeah. really cool version of we, it. We didn't talk about Year of the Comet. Yeah, Goldman's, oh, yeah. which is you know the movie that whole Goldman chapter. Yeah, that's right. I've still never seen it. I, I don't even know how you find it. It's just not very good. I own it on Blu-ray if you'd like to borrow it. That's the um, Tim, Tim Daly? Yeah, Tim yeah. Daly. It's like the quest for the bottled wine. Um, 
What's weird is I don't know if any wine movie has ever worked. Well, besides Sideways. We talked oh, about good this point. on Sideways. Yeah, but that the, was the, the first Russell one. Crow, but like the, Scott one. Yeah, good go, year. Like, yeah, you're right. Sideways. So that that's kind of the broke the one. curse. Yeah. And now, weirdly, you can't make another one because you can't live up to Sideways. Right. It's like Slapshot. Yeah. Right. The Indian Reds won the award. What happened the next day? Uh, everyone's life sucked. I think Mike's <laughs> going to become a cop with his brother. <laughs> oh, Mike becomes a cop. Do you th- so do you think Mooch moves to Chicago with Nancy? Mooch has like four kids. Yeah. 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 I think I think Dave is fine. I think he's going to get a college education and have a career and be an engineer and he'll, he'll do great. How do you think Dave's nineteen year younger sibling is going to fare in the world? <laughs> it's a little I forgot about her being pregnant in the last yeah. scene yeah yeah. I don't know I have a sibling that's 20 years younger she's doing sure. great yeah that's fine yeah you, you're down on I'm just super young siblings like that, do you think do you think Paul Dooley's character is gonna get easier going as he so gets older that's a fair point yeah. well actually I think it softens you up as you get older sure I think the older you are the, the lighter you are as, with the touch as a parent I did think about putting that in nitpicks that she just gets pregnant right away how old was Barbara Barry it's at unclear. this time? She's I'm going to say she's early, mid-40s. She's right? in her 90s now. That would be unusual for that yeah. era. Yeah. You'd have to be pretty fertile. <laughs> she was She was 47 when the film was made? Pretty fertile, sir. Yeah. hi Oh, my. hi Barbara Barry. <laughs> like, her ovaries are just rumbling. <laughs> They're just rumbling. She's, They're like Jerome Bettis in the 2006 Super Bowl. They're rumbling right now. <laughs> Is that what happens to ovaries? Do they rumble? Yeah, they're rumbling. They're the bus? Yeah. <laughs> What piece of memorabilia would you want from this movie? I think there's an obvious answer for this. It's not the bike shorts. I think it's the bike. The bike. The yeah. bike. The fur. That's fucking the cool. They have the bike. bike. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I wonder if that is in a museum somewhere. I had Neapolitan Sunset Cologne. Would mm. mind slathering a little bit of that on for the next rewatchable. See if you notice. <laughs> it's like a threat. <laughs> Coach Coach Finstock Award, best life lesson. Everybody cheats. Now I you just know. didn't know. Yeah. Love that. This is going to be interesting. Who won the movie? Tessich? Academy Award? From the definition of the movie, or of the category, to win the movie, so leaving the movie, you're the winner of it, but it also leads to other stuff that helped you win. Well, then so you're setting this up for Quaid. I don't know if I ever really realized that you... I don't think it's Quaid. Okay. The state of Indiana? Ooh. Well, incredible portrait of the state. I don't. This is one I I couldn't really come up with. An oh, answer. you know another one, Mellencamp coming up. Oh wow, you know? Mellencamp. Wow. Yeah, yeah, he was probably writing Jack and Diane yeah. in 1979. And he Good was call. he was in his cougar era. Yeah, yeah. Scarecrow, you know. <laughs> I don't, Great record. I was the one I settled on was Yates because uh-huh. I think he was probably one level below the great directors he was competing against. Right. Mm-hmm. Right, he's 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 not in the all time class of filmmakers. He's not in that like top twenty five, but he's weirdly closer than you'd think in the top one hundred. Given, but his if you're resume. talking about all his seventies class, it's funny because I just read Tarantino talk about this, like the different classes, because that Lucas Spielberg class mm-hmm. is coming. So he's in the previous class, right? Yep. That are all making cool yeah. stuff. Yep. That bridge the sixties, seventies. He's like we were talking about. He's like Lumet, Frankenheimer, those guys. He's yeah. from that era. But would Aldrich you put him like? Would you put him up there with Lumet? Uh, Would you put Michael Ritchie I mean, over him? Like he, Ritchie is probably more his contemporary, but I think he made classier, tonier movies than Michael Ritchie. Kind of George Roy Hill, yeah, class. Who I think was also more successful. Yes, which he is was. my point. I think he needed this one for the for the filmography. I think Bullet and Breaking Away. Those are, are two, forever movies. Yeah, those yeah. are the f- that's those are the first two you'd probably make. Yeah, then he has them. a couple of cold and ones. And then Eddie Coyle and yeah. Hot Rock, and there's a bunch of movies people yeah. are like, I fucking love that movie. Yeah, so I'd go with the eights. That would be my choice. It's a good pick. I think Indiana's a good one. Yeah. Because this is like a love letter to Indiana, and even at the end, it's the first thing that pops up in the credits. I think you could yeah. make the argument for Barbara Berry. Yeah. Both in terms of her performance and then you know, she she goes on to have like a pretty notable career for Yeah. Another 40 yeah, for, years? For a 50-year-old woman. Just a yeah. blood feud yeah. with Barbara Bossen. <laughs> Who won? So confusing. Barbara Bossen was Hill Street Blues. She married Bochco. Oh, yeah. It was she always won like, Yeah. 
Um, Bochco, Bochco did well, yeah. yeah. You think so? Bochco. He, yeah. yeah. Made, some, made some bank. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's still cranking guy? it. He's like CR. He's still yeah. cranking. He's still working? He's still cranking. Yeah, isn't he like on, every once in a while, it'd be like Stephen Bochco Productions still somehow, yeah. right? I legitimately would, would love to hear one episode of The Watch that was just we talk about what Bochco did. Honestly, I bet Greenwald could do that. You guys should do it. My whole life is involved Bochco, so I'm in. I've even seen the Cop Rock pilot. Uh, me too, yeah. BS appearance on The Watch? That'd be great. The Bochco Hour? Boost the numbers. Get Murder numbers One? I, that was an underrated one. I enjoyed that one. I, liked I never one. liked yeah. the bald guy. Oh, I, and I, that's what, that's like yeah, the reason I watched that, that show. Who was that guy? I don't remember. Daniel something? I never could get behind that guy. <laughs> yeah. That was a fun show. That was really lurid. It was like a lot of dark The first season turns. of NYPD Blue is like an incredibly important TV season. Oh, yeah. Me. Yeah. Oh, Bochco. How do we get here? Barbara Boston? Yeah. What a great podcast. Barbara Boston yeah. versus Barbara <laughs> Barry. <laughs> so you think Yates... You, do you I'm didn't... saying Barbara Barry. Who are you saying? In the state of Indiana. Okay. So we, we split decision. Good split. What's coming up next on this pod? Uh, one of the... One of pot, the... It's, I think it's going to be a sports movie or a 70s sports movie. Okay. It's going to be one, in one of those two categories. So it will definitely be a sports movie. Yes. It's a sports movie, but is it a sports movie just randomly or is it a 70s sports movie? Yeah, that's the decision. What yeah. spurred this? Was it the Celtics in the finals? No, it was just that we did slap shot. Okay. And we got to get some bangers out because it's the last year of the podcast. <laughs> yeah. It's banger time. I'm glad that one-on-one -on -one is going in the banger zone here. <laughs> <laughs> you vetoed one-on-one. -on, -one. on the one hand... I just said I had... I, I, I've been loving this... <laughs> this era of the show i'm really yeah it's been exciting watching banger, you pick banger bangers month. on the other hand you're you've opened yourself up now to a unique form of criticism which is your definition of banger and if mm. you if you quote unquote misstep on then, a banger then if people are like this actually isn't if breaking away isn't a banger then how will you receive if that? people don't think breaking away is a banger i don't know if they understand the podcast well they just probably haven't seen the movie yeah anyone who criticizes the breaking away choice, just watch the movie yeah also like we don't want you you can leave the pot. It's a good attitude. Yeah. Yeah. Breaking away is a the is big picture eight. is a big tent waiting for you. You know? No. Breaking away is a <laughs> no, big if banger. you don't like breaking away, then you're not welcome in the big picture tent either. I actually I, I made fun of Sean. If you don't the like other breaking day. away, you're not allowed to listen to higher learning either. I'm just like saying blanket ringer pots oh, are I see. off the okay. network. Okay, yeah. good to know. But Sean's part of the problem with movies. And no. That's the part he hasn't accepted. No. I told him this two days ago. Oh, really? No, this yeah. is not true. Was this after his monologue? No, is is I hadn't heard the monologue yet. But it was ironic because of what my take was. Sean's about celebrating new movies and movies still matter. And yet the big picture, which is a podcast that covers movies, half the time is going backwards and doing like drafting 1977 movies. Mm -hmm. And it's like, if you really cared about new movies, you would celebrate the new movies. Right. Would you He's like part of the problem. Five episodes about He's the like guy. the studios who's like, oh, I'm going to check out my analytics. What did better this month? Oh, we got to do another draft. Did you guys actually have this conversation? Yeah, this no, I was live? making fun of him and he was getting mad. <laughs> uh, but it just showed the lack of research that goes into this kind of taunting that Bill it's, pulls. Sean he's like, is a Why don't you do an episode well, of, he's about Sean? And I had guy. already done an episode Busy about Busy trying to figure out, you know, who are the best foursomes in movies. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, here's the thing. I won't attack you. You can you're attack me all you want. You're a franchise guy. I think guy. you're doing amazing work you're on the, the rewatchables. <laughs> I'm really, I'm just so lucky to be a part of this experience. And I want to say thank you. I agreed with Sean's take. <laughs> We're taping this at the end of May. I agreed with Sean's take about uh, the strike. Mm -hmm. I think that's the number one thing. I it's think a, the strike it's a big just deal. fucked things up. It's a big deal. Because we see it in TV too. Those two TV shows that came out this week. One with Cumberbatch. Yeah. And then what's the other one called? Eric? The, that, the that's Cumberbatch the Cumberbatch one. Eric, yeah. yeah. Which I'm what's not the, What's the other one that came out? I thought there was two. Next week is Clipped and Presumed Innocent. Or two weeks, I think, Presumed Innocent. So Clipped comes out presumed next week. Innocent. Presumed Innocent. There's a show we needed. <laughs> Gee, I wonder what's going to happen. Not the movies because you're not I wonder interested who did in it. The, the movies <laughs> or you're not interested in the experience. Which one? Like, for, so like if you're going to go see Furiosa, like, let's say you would. Would you, are you, are you, did you ever even No, you know what I'm going to say? Because it's two hours and 40 minutes. Okay. Oh, I don't want to spend four hours going to and from a movie theater when I could be watching the Brady Bunch. Yeah. Bill, seriously, <laughs> we got on a work call and he was like, you're part of the problem, but he will not go see Furiosa. He just will not go to the movie theater. <laughs> I like, like we did Fast Times and yeah. Craig, we were told Craig. And he said it's 90 times. minutes. I can't believe Craig it. Craig texts back. 
90 minutes yeah. exclamation point i that's part of the problem i can't argue with that I what's break what was breaking away like an hour 140 140 yeah. yeah tight i i i in general i think some movies if they want to be three and a half hours i'm fine with it if it's a big idea and a big story but you're like down the middle genre movie being two hours and 20 minutes i don't really understand iron claw two hours plus and didn't even have one of the brothers in it <laughs> It's a good point. They're Why? like, yeah, we don't have room. For the, we <laughs> can't tell that story. It's like your movie's two and a half hours. <laughs> it's uh, it's tough. Would you have wanted it to be three hours with no, one more brother? No, yeah. an hour and a half version. It's like get rid of some other brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe they I, all should have died in the first scene. That would have been a lot better. <laughs> yeah, just a montage. <laughs> <laughs> well, like when Taken comes on, uh -huh. it's like what's that? Like eighty nine <laughs> minutes. It's like oh, they took his daughter. And really, oh, he's going to France. <laughs> yeah. Uh oh. So. It just flies by. Maybe that's what we need. <laughs> I don't, what does Iron Claw have to do with Taken? Honestly, no, but he's like, saying like he had the same resistance to Wick Four. We were like, you want, what are we going to do? Well, Wick that's, yeah. that's a fair point. I, Wick Four is too long. Yeah. FYI, I still haven't seen Wick Four, Did and you start I it? love John Wick. I watched forty minutes of it on an airplane. I'm like, I can't do it this way. Did you know it's ten years since Wick One, which we've never done? Ten years. Now that's a banger. Should we do Wick One on Monday? Damn. Well, when we all knew each other in fourteen, mm. I felt like that was one of the last fun movie years. Mm, nineteen is inc an incredible movie year. Yeah, nineteen's once upon I a said time one in of the last. Yeah, nineteen to me is the that's like the demarcation point. It and was then COVID. Yeah, yeah. But there were literally fifty movies in nineteen where I was like, "Wow, that was really good." I want to get back to nineteen seventy nine, but I don't feel like it's ever happening. I also wonder if we're just running out of stories to tell. And people are afraid. Because... I don't think it's that. I think it's. I think it's the economics of it seem like really complicated. I've like we said it's like you can make something like this, even adjusted the budget, it would be like twenty million bucks to make Breaking Away. Yeah, and, and like Chalamet would million... have had to be the Dennis Christopher part. Yeah, Why but... does Fall Guy cost one hundred and forty million dollars? I don't understand. Yeah, that's not necessary. There's a. I have an old guy in the couch point too. Could part of it be people spend less time? socially interacting which makes it less likely for them to come up with cool movie ideas because they're just like oh they're uh, we're a more online society i think maybe people are getting a little bit overly swayed by like online discourse about movies before they just go check them out you know I was oh thinking, they're that's a separate because i was piece. thinking about like yeah, the that's Furiosa, a and it's like furious is pretty good and everybody who sees it is like, that was pretty good. That was pretty cool, man. Yeah. And like, if you just did pure word of mouth rather than like, I've read 10 articles about right. how Furiosa right. signals the end of the movie <clears throat> industry. Yeah, I'm, I'm obviously guilty of that as well. But I, I think there's this thing going on where like a, a lot of the masters of movies right now don't like telling contemporary stories because you have to put cell phones in them. And so, like, cell phones kind of ruin the ability. Hmm. Like, a lot of the problems of some of the great movies of the first hundred years of film, if you had a cell phone, they would be solved. Yeah. You know, just be like, just call Jim. Yeah. And then we'd, we wouldn't have to worry about this ghost haunting us in this house. Right. So, that is an issue. But I will say, there's a se sequence with a cell phone in Hitman where I was like, that's the coolest use of a cell phone I've seen in a movie, maybe ever. And so, there's, like, there's stuff to do. So I was texting my buddy Gus about the King's Island episode about the Brady Bunch because it's just insane. And Gus was saying how the episode couldn't exist now because Mr. Brady would lose the plans and then he would just text Jan, hey, can you grab the plans? Right. Cell phones have solved 50% of the dilemmas we ever had in a movie. Right. Because even like a movie like Go, which I just watched, because yeah. I was scouting it for rewatchables, mm -hmm. it's not quite there. Uh, two thirds of it is is great. The last third is Kind of bad. Yeah. I also scouted Empire Records. Couldn't get there. Dude, that's... Okay. No. Come on. You what? guys might have to take that one without me. <laughs> I, I, I don't just, know what to say. I couldn't quite get there. I don't know what to say. Couldn't get there. I felt the same way I did I, in the mid-90s. I, I, I say this with respect. I think you're wrong. I deeply I, enjoyed I'm, Empire Records. I'm not Records. saying I'm right. Yeah. I just can't personally get there with that movie. Okay. I think because it's the movie I wanted it to be, I can't get Wait, there Wait, so with. you're saying go... You were, it was Go, cell phones. Oh, I gave yeah. it a whirl. I really wanted, and I liked it so much when I was... But a cell phone would have solved an issue in that movie? No, it's just, I think you watch movies like that now, and you're in the lack of a cell phone and people being able to get a hold of each other is such a big part of right. so many yeah, movies yeah, like yeah. that. Right. I wonder how crazy movies like that are going to seem in 20 years, 
when we have fully moved on from generations. Yeah, but if we don't make never had movies a cell phone, that are contemporary at all, like if every movie is either set before cell phones or in a dystopian future where people don't really use them because they're getting screens on like billboards mm-hmm, or like mm-hmm. Blade Runner, like there will be this huge like gap of of like films not documenting contemporary life. Hmm. Pulp Fiction. Did you remember my watch? He's just texting that to her now. And then she would remember the watch. Yeah. Yeah. Set set an alarm. Yeah. So basically we should ban cell phones to make movies more interesting. Sure. I mean, a lot of filmmakers have just not made, written contemporary movies because of this. Going backwards. Yeah, I think Paul Thomas Anderson talked about this. Uh, a couple of other directors. His new movie is going to be set in 2019, right? It will, yeah. I like that uh, that Snack Shack movie, whatever that was called. Really good, right? Yeah. That's a real BS it was good. movie. I watched Set that. in 1991. Yeah. I like it too. Yeah. It's a my fun son, movie. My son loved it. And he's like, can you make a list of all the coming of age summer movies? I just want to watch all of them this summer. No, that's a good idea for a theme. He one. loves yeah. He loves that theme every time. Yeah. I mean, Breaking Away is kind of that. Yeah. Well, so I was like, you should watch Adventureland. You'd really like that mm, one. Good one. And he looks at it. He goes, I don't like some of the actors. I'm not going to watch that one. I was like, you literally asked me for a suggestion and the first one I said was Adventureland and then you shot the suggestion down without watching. Is he out on Eisenberg? <laughs> this is what it's like to be a dad. <laughs> and trust me, I can relate to that. Yeah. Uh, uh, Eisenberg? What's the issue I, here? I, I, I think it was K-Stew? Ryan Reynolds, k Stu, Caesar's Twilight. He just was like, no, I need another one. But will Give he watch more. like One Crazy Summer with Cusack? Oh, that's interesting. I didn't think about that one. It's a fun one. I'll let you know how it goes. Okay. That's it for the rewatchables. Thanks to Jack and Gahal. It's good to see you guys. Uh, we'll see you next week on whatever theme month we came up with. <laughs> yeah.